All right. Hey guys, and welcome to the second episode of The Joy of 3D Art. Today, we're going to be making this little hand-painted low-poly cottage. So we're going to be making the house, the roof tiles, the posts, a door, a wall, the pillars, and everything. We are going to be doing something slightly different than you saw in the thumbnail, though, where the thumbnail has grass. Um, I'm not actually going to be showing how to create a particle system. Rather, as you can see right here, uh, I have an add-on, which is great, and it's called Scatter. And basically, it helps set up uh, biomes and a bunch of different particle systems on targets for you, so that way you don't have to create it yourself. It is about $45 to $95 on Blender Market, but if you're interested in it, you can check out the link in the description and pick that up for yourself. It's not sponsored, it's just a really cool add-on, and I think it would be beneficial if you're ever working with terrains and stuff. So, with that said, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started with all of this. So create a new Blender file, and I hope you enjoy creating this along with me. Okay, so we are starting off in a new Blender file here. Um, and what we want to do is actually delete the default cube. Now, I know usually when people are like, delete the default cube, they don't replace it with anything, or you know, they immediately add a new cube back. That's not what we're going to do. We are going to delete this default cube, though, and we're going to add in just a quick plane. Uh, and then this plane will serve as the ground for our uh, cottage where it's going to sit on. Uh, and we want to make sure that this ground is kind of scaled up by five so let's go ahead and hit s and then five and i forgot to turn on screencast keys but this way anybody is uh who's following along can match that so again i just hit s and then scaled up five and uh let's check those dimensions i just want to make sure so it is 10 by 10 um i'm gonna go ahead and scale this up by 1.5 so 1.5 there we go that gets us a 15 by 15 uh, little cube or plane here and we're going to use this plane as our ground so come over to our scene selection uh, or our scene collection outliner and just name this ground and then we're going to set up some collections for us to actually work on now we need two main collections uh, the first is going to be the house, obviously, we're working on the cottage, and then the second will be the environment. So just come over to the outliner again, and up in the right-hand corner, hit this new collection button twice. So you get collection one and collection two. Then make sure to rename them house and environment. Okay, so now that we've created our two collections, let's go ahead and start adding in some objects into them. We're gonna start in the house collection just because it's going to be a lot easier to map this out and then build our environment pieces around it at the proper scale. So select the house and then we're gonna hit Shift A and add in an empty. Now we'll choose a plain axis empty here and then this will serve as the overall house empty. Uh, basically this is going to allow us to tie all of our different objects that we create together and once we've tied them together, um, you know, we'll be able to kind of move and position the house well by parenting them all to this empty. So we're going to start by creating this house empty. So go ahead, like I said, and add a plain axis empty and then rename it. So now inside this house collection, we're going to create three quick um, pieces here we're going to or collections we're going to create a roof collection and then we'll also create a post collection um, from the thumbnail and from the preview at the beginning of the episode uh, we saw wooden posts going around the sides of the building so we're gonna make sure we have those all in a separate collection and then we are going to have the cottage and its pieces itself. So the cottage is going to consist of um, the, the actual brick building, or I guess plaster building, uh, and then the chimney, and then the front steps. So let's go ahead and name that cottage. And now that we have done some basic setup for 
our scene, let's go ahead and actually get started by creating some stuff. So with the cottage collection selected, we're just gonna go ahead and add in a single cube. Now this is all said and done, but you can see it goes halfway through the floor. So let's jump over to the modeling tab here and we should be in uh, edit mode automatically. And let's hit G and then Z and then one, which will bring the cube up one meter. And since it was a two meter cube to start, that's actually going to make it so that the cube is sitting directly onto our ground, which you can't see because it's just a plane. But there we go, it's now on the plane. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and scale this up and because it's sitting on the plane, it's actually going to keep it on the plane as we scale it up. Um, actually, that's not true. Let me redo that because I had my uh, scaling set to the 3D cursor here and the 3D cursor is still at the center. So if you did that and it didn't quite work right, that's why. So we're gonna go ahead and I guess we'll keep it at the 3D cursor and we'll just scale this up again. And then I wanna go to individual origins or median point, let's do median point for now. And I'm gonna hit Shift D just to duplicate this cube. Then hit Y to move it back along the Y axis. And this is going to serve as the main part of our cube or the main part of our cottage here. So then scale it on the X axis until right about there. I think that was uh, a resize if I check the bottom here of about 3.1. You can also check your uh, operator panel by hitting the F9 key since I'm covering up my operator panel by my webcam. So there we go. These two cubes are intersecting. That's not really a problem. Uh, but let's go ahead and add in the peaks for the cottage. So we'll just add in a loop cut here by hitting Control R and then selecting and then right clicking to leave it in place. Then again, we'll add another loop cut, Control R left click to select or right click if you're a right clicker uh, and then um, you know the cancel movement so that way it stays in place there and then we're going to grab the two edges that we added in at the top hit G and then Z and just pull these up and now we have the basic shape of our house and it's not perfect uh, we definitely need to bridge these two together which is going to entail kind of pushing uh, this house into itself but uh, there we go and they're at the same height which is going to be beneficial when we actually create the wood beams at the top so let's come in here and grab these two faces on the back of our house and hit G and Y and just pull these until they intersect we don't want to take it all the way through and ultimately it's okay if it doesn't look perfect uh, because the roof is going to sit on top of this and kind of hide this anyways which we'll get in when we clean it up Okay, and then the last part for the house is this little back piece. Um, you didn't see it on the render of the cottage, but it is there. So let's go ahead and add in a little extra piece here and select these faces. So just two loop cuts, uh, control R, scroll up one to get two selections. Here, we'll do that again, just so you can follow along. Control R to put in the loop cuts, scroll up one to get two loop cuts and then left click to confirm. And actually we'll just drag this over to right about there. That should be good. Uh, okay. And then from here, we'll just extrude out the face of the house. There we go. And we'll take this edge and we'll just push this edge down. And we don't want it to necessarily come off as like a We don't want it to come off necessarily as the same length um, and the same width. So what we want to do here is just add in real quick. Another edge loop. And I'm just going to push this top edge down. There we go. And then we'll be able to have the top roof and kind of a back sloping roof. It'll really add to the overall shape of the house. So there we go, we have the cottage kind of blocked out. So let's go ahead and rename that object. And then we're gonna block out the next part here, which will be the chimney. So hit tab on the cottage and select the edge over here on the left and hit shift S and then cursor to select it. From there, we're gonna add in another cube. And we don't need it to be uh, two meters, but, we'll we, but we will go into uh, edit mode, hit G, Z, and one, so that the bottom of the cube 
is at the point of origin. So that way when we move it down and we set it kind of into the base, we can see that it's good. All right, and then scale it down on the x-axis. And just kind of pull it out. And this is gonna be our chimney. So we can go ahead and label this as chimney in the outliner. Max Matthews, welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? Just gonna take a real quick drink of water. And then uh, to get the rest of the chimney shape, we're going to hit E to extrude upwards, and then S and Y to scale it in on that Y axis. Uh, and then we can kind of adjust this by just pulling it up with G and then Z. And once we're satisfied with the width of our chimney, and I think that's probably gonna be good, we're just gonna hit E and extrude all the way up. Now, it's okay to take it a little bit further. Remember, we are going to be putting roof tiles and a roof object um, kind of on this. So you wanna take that chimney a little bit higher than you think you will need to. Uh, and then that's gonna be good. But we're just gonna go ahead and add in that blocky shape there uh, for the top of the chimney, like most stereotypical chimneys have. So hit E and then right click and leave it in place. What you've done is extrude out a new face and then haven't moved it. So now we can hit S, scale it out a little bit and hit E again. And now we have our blocky chimney base here. And then we'll hit I, extrude in just a little bit and E to bring that back down. Okay, and our chimney is basically modeled. We can play around with it maybe if we don't want to uh, have it be as wide on that Y axis, we'll scale everything down. But other than that, the chimney is basically done. So we'll kind of leave this in place for now and uh, continue kind of mapping out the rest of these parts and then we'll get in and do some little bit more detailed modeling. Okay, so for the next step, what we wanna do is add in the front step. So if you were to come out of this cottage, you wouldn't wanna step directly onto the ground. You kinda of want a place where you could put a welcome mat or just kind of have some kind of stone platform. Uh, so what we're gonna do here, just going to select this face, uh, or sorry, this edge on the front, shift S, cursor to selected, and add in another cube. And once again, just G, Z, and one to put the point of origin at the very base here. And then we'll move this all the way down. And it's okay if it goes through the bottom of the, uh, the ground, that's okay. I just don't want it to be too far below. So we'll switch into front orthographic and position it a little bit better. And then we're just going to grab this top face here and move it way down. And uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add in a mirror modifier. This mirror modifier will allow us to work on one side of the stone step. It'll also make it a little bit easier for when we go to texture because we won't have to apply textures to both sides. We can just texture one side. So we're gonna grab this left face here and we're gonna hit G and X and move it across the point of origin on the X axis. And then come over to our modifiers tab in the properties panel and add in a mirror modifier. Now we can see that it is duplicated over on the left hand side because it is defaulted uh, to model mirror across the X axis. So what we wanna do is turn on clipping on that mirror modifier and then hit G and X to bring it back to the center. Now we can see that if we hit G and X again, it's not gonna pull anything away. So we know that these edges and vertices are now snapped to that center line and we don't have to worry about you know the model pulling apart from itself, but we still have a face on the inside. So we're just gonna hit X and then delete that face, leaving us with just the vertices in the front there. Now we can also see if we hit tab that the whole object goes kind of back in there. So let's turn on X-ray by coming up to the top and hitting this button up here. And uh, we're just gonna grab this back face and hit G and Y until it basically connects with the front of the house. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, if you want to, you can check it from the right hand side. We just want it to go into the house a little bit to give the illusion that it is connected. Uh, and then I'm gonna hit G and Z and just kind of move this up. There we go. Okay, 
and just like we did with the face that was you know uh, in the middle there by the mirror modifier we don't need it so we're going to delete that face as well uh, and that'll prevent us from having to texture something on the back and also missing anything when we go to texture so let's add in a loop cut here and actually get ourselves a step now we want our steps to be the same size just because you know humans trip if the steps aren't the same size uh, if you don't want your steps to be the same size, you can move that loop cut that we added around uh, and position it where you want it, but I want my steps to be the same size. So from here, I'm just going to hit E and extrude out and say right about there, which for me was 0.33 meters. And now we have our stone steps, and we can turn off X-Ray. Just come over to the outliner here and make sure you name this steps. And now that we've uh, kind of blocked out those things, let's go ahead and parent them to the uh, empty object. So we're going to take the chimney, cottage, and steps in the outliner, select them, and then kind of click and drag and then hold shift and set them to the house empty. So now if we rotate the house empty object, we rotate all three of those objects together. That's why we created the house empty in the first place, and it's going to be very useful if we ever have to kind of adjust where we want the house position to be. Okay, so we have our cottage basically modeled out. Let's go ahead and create the posts. Now, for the posts of our house, we need a base. So let's, I guess, start then with the base. Uh, you can do it kind of however you want. You can create a, a kind of stone rim going all the way around uh, the house if that's what you're looking for. And I know that that is what's in the thumbnail. There's this kind of stone rim going all the way around uh, the bottom of the house. So I guess let's go ahead and get started with that. So click on the posts uh, collection here and hit shift C to bring our 3D cursor back to the point of world origin. We're going to add in another cube. Again, GZ1. I know we can't see it because it is outside of the, uh, or it's inside the cottage, but let's go ahead and toggle X ray, then move this all the way down and get a decent size here. There we go. And then what we're gonna do is turn on the mirror modifier. So we're going to add another mirror modifier. We'll move the, the whole cube over on that X axis and add a mirror modifier. And we'll also turn on clipping again, just to prevent anything from getting in our way or from sticking, okay? And then we can delete the face on the inside because we don't need it. And then let's go ahead and scale this on the Y axis till it's kind of roughly outside the house. Doesn't really matter how far it is outside the house. We can turn off X-ray and get a better view here. But we can see that this is going to serve as the base. So we can just go ahead and scale it out a little bit more on the X axis, a little bit more on the Y axis, just kind of until it's vaguely uniform. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to be close. All right, and then back into X-Ray, and we're gonna add a loop cut. And the loop cut can go right about there. Kind of look at the width of the, uh, the base coming out of the house and add in the width um, for there. Just like make it the same. Then we're gonna grab the face right here and hit G and X, sorry, we're going to extrude, my apologies, and we'll just take this all the way out until vaguely it's the right size. Then we can grab both of these faces on the back here, hit G and Y, and pull these out. And then we just need to add one uh, little section back here but we will need to do that separately because we have a non-mirrored cottage. So we're going to need to um, you know, separate out kind of the mirror here. So we have the main base. And we'll need to create a new object here for the back base. And actually, if we look at that, let's take a look. Turn off X-ray, look at this from the top. We can see that it's not quite as wide in the back. So I'm gonna actually just gonna take this and Move it a little bit wider out. There we go. Yeah, there we go. 
Okay. Now for this, I am going to, uh, I guess, create another cube. So control or, or shift A, new cube. And let's move this back here. And let's kind of center it. And to make sure that it's centered on this uh, back face here, let's go ahead and hit shift S, select that back face uh, to snap the, well, okay. Select the back face and then hit shift S and snap the 3D cursor in place. Uh, and then what we can do is shift S again with the cube selected and move the selection to the cursor. That's gonna line it up and make it directly center here. And uh, then we can tab in edit mode and scale it down on the z-axis and then move it down okay and then we're going to just reposition this so the point of origin is below the piece move it down Now, I wanna get these to be the exact same height. So we're gonna do a neat little trick here with some snapping. So grab this top face and then come up here and turn on snapping. And we wanna make sure that it's snapped to vertex closest uh, and only affected when we move it. So then we can hit G and Z and then hold, or and then you can move your cursor over to another vertice around here. So we'll pick the vertex at the corner so that it's the same height and then select, and then it will have snapped that uh, to the same height. So if we look at this from behind by hitting Control-1, we can actually see that they are directly the same height going across. And then we can select everything, hit G and X, and move this across over here, and add another mirror modifier. Once again, turn on clipping, hit G and X, and bring it back together. Then grab the inside face and delete it. Okay, then we're just going to kind of move this into the other object. If you want, you can make one smaller, you can make one larger. It will kind of add in some extra detail. Um, there we go. And I'm gonna grab this face and move it in along the X axis so that the widths kind of even out here. Now for this stone base, we do want to add in some little extra uh, details and things. So I'm just going to add in, uh, say, three loop cuts here, move them over just a bit, and then we're going to grab the offset edge loop loop cut tool. Um, so what we'll do with those three edge loops selected, we just click and drag. I mean, I want to pull them apart too far, something like that is gonna be just fine because what that's going to allow us to do is then grab these faces right here, but I don't know why I can't grab faces. Uh, there we go. Okay, I wasn't in face select mode, that'll do it. Jewel, welcome to the stream, how are you doing today? <laughs> I don't know if your favorite streamer is being sarcastic, but uh, I appreciate it. So what we want to do here then also is, you know, kind of create those same loop cuts again, going this direction, uh, and then once more offset the edge loop. Doesn't matter if they're perfect, that's fine. Okay, and then what now we can do, switch to the select tool again, and we should have a bunch of squares that we can then kind of pull up and adjust. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna click and select all of those exposed edges or exposed faces for us and hit E and extrude those up. And then you can kind of play around with their heights. Maybe we don't want this one to be as tall. So we want it, uh, you know, you can move it down a little bit. Maybe this one should be rotated so we can rotate it over on that X axis. Uh, maybe this one's gonna be a little smaller on the top. You know, and just kind of add some variety to it.
except we're not going to do that on the one in the middle too much because it's going to be shared but we will bring those to kind of together kind of make it a little smaller there we go all right and that's kind of giving us a nice little uh kind of bricked out pattern here but to improve this what we'll do is we'll create a vertex group so select all of those edges on the or sorry all of those faces that we turned into stones at the bottom and come over to the object data properties from there we can hit vertex groups and add in a group called bevel and then hit the assign button and we can deselect and select and we can see that all of those faces that we had selected were uh, are now you know in that vertex group which is great because we can add in the bevel modifier here and limit it to the bevel vertex group and we can see that we do get some beveling in here if we wanted to increase the segments we can do that we can also just switch it to bevel only the edges and then increase the amount uh, that it bevels however uh, we do have clamp overlap turned on so you know it's going to limit the amount of bevel that you can actually do but uh, it's gonna be good let's see if we add another bevel modifier and once again limit it to the vertex group of bevel and do only the vertices we can kind of see a, a more uniform thing uh, I don't really like it I actually just like the one for the uh, the vertex only bevel it's gonna give us the kind of feel like these are stone blocks but they've got a little weathering to them uh, and we can kind of see all of those edges are beveled I think that's gonna look really nice all right and then we just repeat that process with this other base value here so We'll do for this direction and then for this direction and we can do three here and I guess we really only want one here because it's going to be hidden so we'll just add in one and move this over right about there okay then go ahead and select all of those edges just shift and alt when you go to select them uh, we can kind of grab them all like this okay and from there once again we'll grab the, the offset edge loop loop cut click and drag and then let's make sure we do this in an even manner and then pull these way back to something like point or negative point nine something like that that'll be that'll be just fine all right and then we'll grab all those faces again and kind of repeat that process we'll leave that one be okay all right and then e and extrude those up scale it in just a bit now what I just did there and I'll show you it again over on this side so let's go ahead and scale this down and then if we look at it from the top we can see that it, you know it's not connected so let's go ahead and snap this so that the outside edge uh, is flat so we've scaled it down a little bit. I'm gonna hit G and then Shift Z, and then I'm gonna hold Control and just move my cursor over that final edge there. And now you can see that it's nice and straight and snapped. Okay, and then for here, I'm going to set this to the individual origins. We'll grab all three of these, scale these down a little bit. Uh, G, Shift Z, and uh, hold Control. Ah. Maybe I can't do that all at once. Let's snap to an edge. So, G, Shift, Z. Oh, 
that's going to move the whole thing. Let's not do that. Yeah, still not really what I want. That's okay. Let's grab all three of these and move them out slightly on that x-axis. Doesn't have to be perfect. And you can kind of just have fun with this. It doesn't have to be, you know, perfect. There we go. And that one's fine, I can leave that in place. And we'll do one more. One more rear, weird rotation. All right, there we go. Then just grab all of those extra faces and we'll add in a new vertex group again for beveling. Again, it doesn't really matter what these look like, uh, but they are just gonna add some actual, uh, some more depth and detail to your work. So, with that base, let's go ahead, once again, create a new vertex group and call it bevel. And then assign it. Then deselect and select it just to make sure everything is good. And then we can add in a new modifier for beveling and adopt it to only the vertices. Do a limit method of vertex group and then choose bevel. And then we can increase the segments if we want. Take the offset to maximum. All right, that's going to give you uh, some better looks there. So let's go ahead and hide the cottage here because we have a lot of faces on the inside that we don't need. So what we're going to do is actually just select a single face and then hit C and select all of the faces that are not seen, which are all the ones hidden by the cottage. And uh, we can go ahead and hit X and delete them. And once again, do the same thing on the inside. So now we can see that that is all our bases and we can do the same thing over here. And if we bring back the cottage, can we see those internal? No, we cannot. So we've done a little bit of cleanup. We have the base there. We have this base. And we're good. With the exception of that right there, because we have a decentered thing. So, no worries. Let's go ahead and hide the cottage again. Tab in edit mode, turn off x ray.
right, we're going to hide the back base here for a second. And we just want to grab all of these edges here and extrude them on the y-axis. Kind of bring them out right about there. That should be fine. And then we're going to need to join up these two things. So we'll fill and then actually subdivide. Fill. And then right click and subdivide. And once more, fill and then subdivide. All right, now let's bring back the back base here. And this is this part's gonna be hidden, so uh, we can kind of make this, I guess, a little bit smaller here. Hit F twice, fill this in. There we go. All right, and then extrude this one up. All right, and then grab all those newly minted faces, come back over to the bevel group and hit assign as well so that all of these also get updated. All right, and now we can bring back our cottage, check all the way around, and it looks like our stones are good. So now that our stones are good, it's time to move on to the actual wood posts that are gonna hold this thing up. Very, very simple. What we'll do is just select this top base right here Shift S, cursor to selected, and add in another cube. But before we add in that cube, we want to make sure that we are in that post collection still, and then just add in the cube, tab in edit mode, and shrink this thing down. Now we don't want it to take up the entire, um, you know, the entire piece. So what we're going to do here is actually uh, look at it from the top and then scale it down. And we'll position it in place. There we go. Something like that. That should be fine. All right. And then we'll hit E and extrude it all the way up till it comes just above the base of the ridge here. All right. There's our post one. So make sure you name that in the outliner here. And we're going to add a mirror modifier to this. And we're going to mirror this across the base. So then we'll hit Alt and D. We don't want to hit Shift D because we want these to be the exact same uh, object data. So Alt D will create a linked duplicate here and move it along that Y axis until it fits snugly in the middle there. And if we look at it from the top, we can actually see where it's going to connect to. So we'll hit G and Y we want it to go here maybe we move it over just a little bit on that x-axis so it looks more like a post and it kind of hides the fact that there are these stones are connected um, so in fact let's just hit G and Z kind of move it there I think that'll be just fine all right once again alt D and move it along the x-axis there we go create ourselves a little post on this corner position it And Alt D again, moving it on the Y to the back corner. And there we go. Now we do have this little off center place here. So what we want to do now is hit Shift D. Now Shift D, Alt D, they are duplicates, but they're different. Shift D creates a duplicate and duplicates the object data inside, whereas Alt D creates a linked duplicate, meaning that if you were to adjust one of those objects, you would adjust all of them. So we're gonna create a new uh, duplicate here, move it along the X axis till it's right here, but then we're going to change the mirror object from main base 
to back base. And because it is a uh, its own duplicate, it's not going to affect anything else. And then we can go ahead and uh, I guess go into edit mode, scale this down just a little bit, move that down, I guess. And then Alt D this one on the Y axis, move it to the back corner and scale it down on the Z axis. We want to keep the same width and right about there. That'll be okay. Um, but that seems a little too low. So let's go ahead and just grab this one edge here. I'm just going to move that up just a little bit. Yeah, that should be better. So then I can scale this back up on the Z. There we go. And that's going to be the perfect place for a little square window in the back. All right, so all of our posts are done. We can now take all of these posts, select them all, and once again, shift or, you know, click and drag and then hold shift and parent them to the house empty. So now when we rotate the house, all of our objects come with it. Not that we're going to be doing any rotating of the house or everything, but uh, having the house empty kind of hold all of these pieces together really does help when we start getting into, you know, putting it all together and preparing for the final render. Okay, so the posts are now done as far as I'm concerned. So now we have to add in the roof. Now the roof object is going to be very, very easy. All we have to do for the roof object is select the cottage, grab all of the faces that are mapped to a roof, hit Shift D, right click to leave it in place, and then P and separate it out by selection. Now we can see that we've created a new object in our outliner called cottage.001. So what we're going to do is come over to the, uh, you know, the cottage collection and just move this up into the roof collection. And then rename this roof. All right, and all three of these objects are, um, you know, they are, pretty basic if we're being honest and they're all pretty much the right size but we do want to uh, scale them up just a little bit so that the roof overhangs the building so what we're gonna do uh, is actually we're going to right click first and set the origin to geometry so that the um, the point of origin is in the center of all of the geometry that's just gonna help bring it up from the world origin there and then we're gonna scale it I'm just gonna with everything selected we can just scale and uh, I think maybe right there, let's look at this from the right hand side. I think that's probably a good height for the roof. We want it to come up uh, and just over our post a little bit. Uh, and there we go. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be good. Now we do need to fix this roof. We're not gonna leave it just like this. Um, so select the top part here and hit Control L to select the whole thing. And then let's look at this from the front. Then just scale in on the X axis. Uh, until, you know, it covers the roof, but it doesn't go too far. I think something like that's going to be okay, where it intersects with the chimney, uh, but if we need to adjust the chimney, we can definitely do that. Just pull it out a little bit on the x-axis here, and there we go. Still intertwined with the house, uh, but also... out of the roof. Okay. Oh, and it appears I accidentally turned everything off. That's not what we want to do. So uh, I'm also going to take this little roof sign just a little bit further out. So just G and X. And there we go. And I think that's going to work uh, a little bit better since there's no chimney on that side to kind of balance it out. All right, then we can grab this back roof here. Really, really simple. Let's look at this from the right hand side. Just hit G and Z and move it up till it's, you know, hovering off the roof. No biggie. Then we want to come in here on this top roof section here. Grab all of these and G, Y again until it's kind of lined up. Uh, we'll actually also go into the median point here. Just turn on snapping and uh, snap it to vertex. So this way it goes uh, and kind of snaps to the center of the roof there. There we go. And then we can turn off snapping. And I'm just going to move these back on the y-axis to right about there. I think that'll be okay. 
maybe a little further out. Something, something like that. Okay, now, how do we add the depth to the roof? Really, really simple. We're gonna add in a solidify modifier. And then we can look at this from the right hand side just to see how thick this is gonna be. We wanna turn on even thickness for the solidify modifier and then just increase the thickness. And it looks like uh, about 0.16 meters is gonna be perfect for us. Uh, but we do need to bring it down the height of these posts a little bit. So we'll bring it down to right about there. Yeah, and that'll be good once everything is said and done. Okay, so we brought the post down a little bit. It's okay if they come through uh, a tad because we're going to cover this over with roof tiles, but you don't want it to be obvious in case maybe the roof tile doesn't completely cover it. Um, okay, from here, this is kind of looking like it works, but it's also kind of plain. And since we're doing hand-painted models, we actually want to add in some geometry uh, to make it look better. So we're going to just take a minute, add in some loop cuts. I'm going to do three on this base roof here. And then we're going to turn on proportional editing and just make sure that it has connected only turned on. Um, so this way, if I adjust this back roof here, I'm not going to accidentally play around with the top roof. And then I'm just going to hit G and Y and pull this out. And as I scroll back on my wheel, you can see that the roof itself is pulling along those other vertices. We could manually do this if we wanted to, but uh, there we go. And I'm just gonna kind of create an uptick here. Maybe turn off proportional editing, move this back a little bit. And that looks a little bit better because it's more it's more curved. And so it doesn't have this like straight edged look, uh, which is fine, you know, when we're creating our modern houses, but not so great when we're creating something that's not gonna have a ton of uh, detail or anything to it. So we'll grab a top face there, hit control L, and then let's just rotate this and move it down. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. Uh, we can kind of see through the bottom there, but who's really gonna pay attention to that? No one, so we'll keep it, that's fine. In fact, if you really, if you really wanna worry about it, and I think I'm gonna worry about it slightly, we'll just turn on proportional editing and move that top face down, there we go. All right, and uh, okay, I'm good with this back roof here. I think it's okay as far as width is concerned, so let's move on to the top roof. Night 201, welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a good day. What's the best way to go about making stylized characters? Um, well, that depends. Knight, do you want to sculpt or do you want to model? Um, I would say start with a base mesh of the skin modifier go into sculpting, sculpt what you're looking for, get the proportions right, um, you know, and then retop it and go on. But if you're just looking to model, well, that's, you know, I don't, you know, then you just model it. It's kind of a general, general response, but um, there's not really one way to go about making characters. There's, you know, there's a couple of different ways, and people have their own preferences. Okay, and uh, once again, I'm going to add in some loop cuts to the top here. Let's do three to the top on each side. And then we're just going to grab this top edge right here, turn on proportional editing, and, and hit G and Z. And what this is going to do for us is going to create kind of this, a bit of an angled approach. Uh, so let's see... that and uh, let's move this up but we're gonna turn off proportional editing or at least limit it severely so that it kind of flares out a bit there and there's no right or wrong way to do this there's just what you are looking for and I think that is close to what I'm looking for as far as the top angle for the house. And then you know what? 
let's see what that looks like. Maybe we turn on proportional editing a little bit. something like that that's kind of cool looking but you know what we'll stick with it just being flat all right and then one more time at the uh the top bro please finish natsu i did finish natsu um arca there are a couple of streams actually there are three live streams i believe of the natsu playlist just go back through my live streams you'll see them all through but we definitely finished it on stream even going so far as to give him clothing um obviously i didn't retop and texture because that's kind of boring to see on stream, but if you guys want that, I can do that. But uh, but yeah, we went so far as to like give him give him clothes and pose him and everything. So yeah, a bit of an old stream, but I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> All right, and then just two loop cuts here on the front. There we go. Once again, just grab that top G and Z, and kind of pull it with you. They don't have to connect directly any longer. Uh, but let's go ahead and scale these out on the x-axis. There we go. That's That gives it a lot more character as far as a roof is concerned uh, than just having that flat roof. So definitely make sure to put in there. But now you can see we have a little bit of a problem. Between the cottage and the roof, we actually can see some space. And we can see this a little bit better if we change our viewport shading. So let's go ahead and set our viewport shading to random, which is gonna show us the different colors here. Uh, but we can see there's this space in between. So if we're looking at it from the front, we can see the cottage very well outlined, but uh, the roof we can see straight through. And we can do that from the right as well. So we don't want to have that. So let's go back into the cottage. Um, and we're gonna do this one edge at a time. So just grab this top edge here, hit G and Z, and actually let's turn off proportional editing, G and Z, and just move that up. Doesn't have to come through, just has to be hidden. And we can do the same thing on the top here, but we have to hide the chimney to be able to select the top edge over here. Now that one is going to come through because the angle is a little bit better or a little bit crazier. So we'll just go ahead and add in a single loop cut on each side and then let's control select and then shift and then control select and then GZ to hide it again. All right. So there we go. We have our cottage kind of outlined. We have the roof outlined we have the chimney good we have a step some base going around it's looking pretty good what do you guys think jewel how do you market your content on uh, and streams do you only have a twitter jewel i put it in my discord which you guys can check out in the uh description below as far as that, marketing is pretty much YouTube only. I don't really do marketing, but I do have a director of marketing, uh, kind of my best friend from growing up. He's kind of handling this side of things going forward. So we'll be doing Twitter and potentially Instagram and a whole bunch of other places um, as we kind of grow my company into something much, much larger. But I don't really do a whole lot of marketing. Yeah, if people don't find me on YouTube, then they don't find me which is kind of sad. Also, let me take this moment to say, if you guys are enjoying this stream and you're enjoying the, um, you know, the, the modeling and the tutorials and everything, please consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. We're trying to hit 25,000 this year. Um, but yeah. So hit the like button, subscribe. I'd love to have you guys stick around. We do this every two weeks the joy of 3d art or at least we're starting to do this every two weeks in 2021 just because you know making 3d art is fun and i wanted to share this with everyone so if you guys want to keep sticking around definitely subscribe okay arca i did not put different materials on each 
but what I did do is change the viewport shading up here at the top to random. Currently, by default, it's set to material or single or whatever, uh, but I just set it to random. So now every object has a different color on it uh, just for visual purposes. But if we were to like jump over into the render preview or material preview, we can see that it's still all just one material. But this just helps, like I said, to lay it out. Okay, so now that we have our house basically laid out, uh, we need one more collection. So let's select the house collection up here at the top. And wait, did we did we parent our roof? No, I don't think we did. So let's parent the roof to the house empty. Maybe I did. Oh, I did. Look at that. I'm ahead of the game. Okay. All right. Uh, so we want to add that one collection, and we're going to change this collection to be windows and doors. Well, windows and door, because there's only going to be one door. Uh, and then inside this, we'll just add in a door collection, because uh, the door will hold the door and the door frame. And then we'll have uh, three different types of windows. We'll have a circular window up here at the top above the door, two rectangular, and then one square. So for the door, it's gonna be very, very simple here. What we're gonna do, just select our step. I'm just gonna select this one edge real quick. Shift S, cursor to selected, and then hit A, and add in a cube. GZ1, and uh, then let's just check X-ray real quick and scale this in on the Y axis until it's roughly the size of a door. I think that's gonna be okay turn off x-ray and we're just going to sync this into the door quick right right about there and scale this down on the x and say there we go and it's roughly the height that a door should be in my opinion yeah that looks fine all right and with that in place we can just say door and we will come back and we're going to change up how the door is being modeled and everything um so don't don't you worry, that's not going to be the standard door, but uh, let's go ahead and snap the cursor to select it again. We're going to add in another cube, and this will serve as the door frame. So we're just going to scale this all the way down, and then uh, move this over. Actually, we'll leave it in place, tab into edit mode, and move it over to right about there, I think. And we want the door frame to kind of encompass the door. That's that's okay, so we'll move it over this direction and scale it like that uh, on the shift to Z, so just so it doesn't scale on the uh, you know on the Z axis. We don't want it to shrink. By the way, am I making this from imagination or reference? Love your streams, taught me a lot. Arca, thanks. I appreciate that you enjoy my streams. Thanks for being here. Um, I am basing this off a reference. If you were to go back and watch the beginning of the stream, you could see the actual reference, which is also in the thumbnail. Um, but as far as like where I got my references and stuff, um, you know, I got my references from Pinterest, and then I kind of combined pieces that I liked from the stylized houses that I collected and put them uh, into you know, this house. But for the joy of 3D art, basically at the beginning of the episode, I'll show you exactly what we're making, and we're just recreating that essentially. Okay, so with this in place, what we're gonna do is add in another mirror modifier and hit G and Z on that top face here to bring this post up. Now, I think this post is big enough, which means that we're gonna need to scale in the door on that Y axis, which is no big deal. Uh, and then we'll just move it back a little bit until it intersects with the house wall. And I think that's probably okay. Do the same thing here, just make it intersect a little bit with the house wall, and we're good. Then move this over on the x axis till it just encounters the door. And uh, we're going to add in just another cube here. So, cursor to selected, add in a new cube, still in edit mode, and let's scale this all the way down. Just we want it a little bit bigger than the bottom post here, but not too much bigger. Okay, then turn on clipping in the mirror modifier, GX, connect it, and hit faces, uh, and delete faces, sorry. 
there's my Streamlabs. And also, uh, I'll go ahead and make sure I save my work. You want to make sure you save. You don't want to accidentally lose everything. But like I said, guys, if you are enjoying the stream, please subscribe. It really helps the channel. Like I said, we're trying to hit 25,000 this year. Okay, and for the last little piece here, we're going to uh, move this out just a little bit. Add in one more loop cut. And we're going to scale this up a bit. And then while that's scaled up, I also want to move it up because I want the door frame uh, to, to click and kind of go like that. I don't know what that advance is, but uh, there we go. So let's turn on proportional editing, G and Z. Something like that. Turn this off. And I'll just finish it up the rest of the way. All right, and there we go. We have our little door frame. And we'll make sure that both of these are also parented to the house empty. And now it's time to add in our windows. So select the cottage again, grab this front edge and cursor to select it. So we're gonna start with the circular window uh, that'll sit above the door. Kenny Wong and stuck in Epic Ayush, thanks for subscribing. All right, so let's go ahead, Shift A, and add in a cylinder. Make sure you're adding that cylinder to the Windows collection here, and we'll just call this Circular Cylinder. Or rather, Circle Window. Uh, and then we can hit F9, which doesn't actually bring up our operator panel, so dang it, let's do that again. We'll rename it after we've adjusted it. So what we're going to do, we're just going to bring this down to 32 or 16 vertices from 32. Uh, and then we can set the depth to, say, 0.5 meters. That's fine. Uh, in fact, that's even going to be a little large. Uh, but we'll set the radius down to, say, 0.5 as well. Rotate it 90 degrees. Sorry, and if uh, you can't see because I'm blocking the operator panel on my side, you can see uh, I'm setting all of these things in the operator panel itself. So 16 vertices, 0.5 radius, 0.5 depth. Uh, and in fact, actually, we're going to drop this down to 0.3 depth. That should be fine. Uh, rotation of 90 degrees. And let's hit G and Z and move this up. And boom, there we go, we have our window. However, I think it's a little uh, too big, so we're going to scale it down and hit Shift Y to scale it down only on the X and Z axes. That way it's not gonna actually uh, scale in the depth of the window at all. All right, and I think that's good. So that is our circle window. Now, for the next part, we'll come over here, grab this edge, and cursor to select it. This is going to be our large rectangular window. So add in another cube. And uh, then what we'll do is scale this down on the Y axis here. Control A and apply the scale, because we did it in object mode. Then we'll hit tab, go into edit mode, scale it in on the X axis. This will give us a much better uh, kind of a rectangle here, and then we'll just move this up a little bit. And I kind of want to center it, so scale it down just a little bit on the Z axis, and we are maybe not centered, but uh, let's say right there. I think that's good. And then we'll add a mirror modifier. Now, by default, the mirror modifier mirrors across the point of origin in the in the object itself. But we want to change this to mirror across the cottage. So we can just click the little dropper over on the object uh, modifier and select the cottage. And now we can see we have both mirrors. There we go. Make sure we apply the scale on that. And on that, just in case. And we have one more window to add. So let's just name this rectangle window or large window. 
I'm going to add in one more window. So select the cottage, grab this back face here, and just cursor to select it. And then add in a cube. Scale that way down. There we go. Scale it in on the Y axis. And we'll look at this from the back here. And I just want to scale this in, not on the Y. So once again, hit S, scale, and shift Y to scale it in like that. You know, maybe that's a little bit big. Maybe it's not. It might be. But I'm okay with that. I like this window right here. Uh, you don't have to put the window here. You could put it on the back wall if you want. But I kind of like it on this section. You know what? Let's actually see. Because now I'm talking about it. Now I'm thinking about it. Let's see what that would look like. So we'll just snap the object selection to the cursor. Ooh. You know what? That does look better. So we're going to go with that. This is what art is all about. Just trying things, seeing if you like it. Okay, we move it up just a little bit. And there we go. So this is going to be our small window. Okay, so we've basically mapped out everything on the house. Um, things are good, so actually let's make sure that we parent those windows to the house empty. There we go. And just to make sure everything is parented, let's rotate that around. Cool, and we'll right click to cancel the rotation and hit shift C to be able to look at everything in the scene because now it's time to work on the environment pieces. And if you thought that modeling up till now was easy, uh, it's gonna be pretty difficult going forward. We've got three main pieces that we have to worry about. We have to worry about the stone steps that are coming out from the house. We have to worry about the wall and we have to worry about uh, the sign. All three of these are gonna be uh, decently complicated process but they're pretty simple like it's it's complicated uh, but it's pretty easy so you know there's that so let's go ahead and create three collections inside the environment collection and we're going to rename them steps wall and sign Okay, so we're gonna start with the steps because it's the easiest of the three. Uh, and it's kind of like I said, it's the least complicated. So what we're gonna do is move the 3D cursor forward. So hit in to bring out your operator or your viewport properties panel. Then we want to go to view here and we wanna change the location of the 3D cursor forward or sorry, backwards on the Y axis. And we're gonna put it just in front of the stone steps that we created. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and hit uh, Shift A and add in a plain axis empty. This is going to count as the steps empty, and this is a step that cannot be skipped. Unlike the house empty where you, know, you don't really need it, the steps empty is 100% necessary. Okay, and leaving the 3D cursor in place, we need to create uh, two objects. We can go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, viewport properties. So we need to create two objects. The first object is just a cube. This will serve as the stone step itself. So we can just call it step. And I'm going to go into edit mode real quick and uh, let's just scale this thing way down. It doesn't need to be that big. And uh, if we look at it from the front, let's also move it up. And then I'm just kind of move this down. There we go. And I guess I'll scale it, shift Z, kind of create an actual step for us here. Okay, so stone step in place. The second thing that we need is a path object. So shift A, curve, and we're gonna hit path. Now the path comes in on the X and Y, so we just need to hit G, X, two to move it over. 
Uh, and then if we want to, we could scale this down, uh, but we're gonna leave it in place. I think this is gonna be fine. So name this step path or steps path, because we're gonna have end up with three paths and we don't wanna be able to um, accidentally mess them up. Okay, so parent the step and the steps path to the steps empty. That's gonna be really important. Make sure you do that step. And then the rest of this is modifiers. So we're gonna start by selecting the step, going to the uh, subdivision surface modifier. That's gonna give us a nice little rounded step. We can actually increase that if we want to. I think that's gonna be okay, uh, something like that. But if you wanna increase the, uh, you know, the, the level of detail on the step, we can add in uh, an edge loop here, kind of maybe push this up to the top or pull it down to the bottom. I think we'll do it on the bottom. See what happens when we scale this out just a bit. There we go. I think something like that is gonna be just fine. So we've got our step, we added in a couple of edge loops. There we go, with the subdivision surface modifier. From there, we wanna add two array modifiers. <laughs> And you're gonna be like, wait a second, why do we need two array modifiers? Well, the first array modifier is going to give us some uh, detail here. So what we're gonna do is set this factor not to be fully one, we'll set it to maybe 0.7 and then move it on the Y axis, uh, maybe 0.7 as well. Maybe we need to go a little bit further. Yeah. All right, and that's gonna make it so that basically there are you know, offset steps as you can see. Maybe we don't pull them as far, there we go, cool. And then we're gonna change the, yeah, the on the second array modifier, we're gonna come down and change some of the settings. So again, we'll set that relative offset on the second array modifier to 0.7, but then we need to change the fit type from fixed count to fit curve. And then we can select the steps path on our array modifier. Now, having a straight path, this will work, but it's kind of boring. So what we want to do is go into the steps path and look at it from the top down. So you want to hit uh, seven on your numpad so that you're in the top orthographic mode. And then this is where things get really fun. So with everything selected, subdivide. And then just start. Well, we can turn on proportional editing and we can kind of just adjust this pattern here. And don't worry, it's not doing anything yet, but it will. Uh, and all we have to do, go back to the steps and then add in a curve modifier and select the steps path. And now we can see that our stones have transformed from uniform stones to much more variants without having to do any extra work. And that is perhaps one of the coolest parts of doing this whole thing is that everything is controlled by the modifier. So if we wanna change up how our path looks or maybe how the stones look, we just have to go in and adjust the path. And we wanna make it longer, we can make it longer. And maybe we want another one to come out this way. Something like that. Now, because we have the empty, all we have to do, rotate that, and boom. And if maybe the steps path is too long, let's set this to the 3D cursor, select everything, and scale that in. And let's do, I guess, maybe something like that. Look at it from the top again, adjust these a little bit better. Dissolve that vertice, see what happens. There we go. Cool, and there we go. We have a nice little path over here and we can just center it a little bit better to the door and boom, our path and our stones are created.
All right. So we did the steps, and now it's time to basically do the same thing for the wall. So we are going to pull the 3D cursor over a little bit. So let's just, you know, move it over on the X and uh, move it back on the Y. So there we go, right about there. And we need to actually create uh, three pieces for the wall. We need the actual wall itself. And then we need the wall end, which will be like just a little bit different um, for where you can enter into the wall. And then we need the wall topper. So we're going to add all three of those objects. Uh, we'll model it and everything. And then we'll use modifiers to combine them all. So the wall is going to start here, though. So let's go ahead and just like last time with the steps, we want to add in the wall empty object. Okay, now inside the wall collection, let's make a new collection, just call it pieces. Because in it's inside this collection that we're going to add the pieces that will then create the wall. So with that pieces collection selected, add in a cube. Now this will serve as the bricks. So we can just go ahead and name this bricks. And then look at this from the front. GZ1. Turn off proportional editing. And then we're actually going to just get rid of half of this cube. So move it in on the y-axis past the point of origin. And then add a mirror modifier. And then we want to mirror not across the x-axis, but across the y. And we want to turn on clipping, and then hit G and Y again to bring those back to the center, and then delete the face in the middle there. Okay, and we want, uh, we're gonna do three sections of bricks on our wall. So we want to add in two loop cuts, so we have three faces here. And then we'll do, we'll do two like this. Okay, so two loop cuts going top to bottom, two loop cuts going horizontal, life is good. Now, we need to then do some offsetting edge loops. So go ahead, click and select, uh, create our little you know, differences in here. Actually, sorry, that's the wrong one. We're going to go with the sides first. So many pieces in here. Can't remember the exact order for everything. Okay. So the reason we did this is that we're going to set our bricks to different sizes based on if they're in the top or if they're in the middle. So the top bricks are going to be larger bricks. They're going to be kind of the, you know, the heavier stones here. So we're going to just kind of scale these in on the X axis something. Something like that. Maybe not too far. Maybe, maybe like that. And we can scale this out on the x-axis to be something. Like that, maybe. Maybe these need to come in a little bit more. turn this back to the median point and we're going to add in some loop cuts here we're just going to add in two uh, and the reason we're going to add in two is that we need to create some difference between bricks so we'll scale this out on the x-axis okay, give me one second guys
Well, I guess I'll have to look into why Streamlabs is sending the advance key, but you know what? I don't know, and I can do that later. I thought it was maybe something I had done, but it's not. Okay, so we've got our brick layout here. All right, we've got two bricks on each side, on the top and the bottom, and one brick and some pieces in the middle there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just extrude these out. No biggie. And then grab everything and uh, scale it in on the Y axis, just so it kind of narrows itself down. Oh, we don't wanna, don't wanna go too far. Let's just move it in on that Y axis instead of scaling. There we go. That's gonna give us the really basic shape of our wall. Uh, if we want, we can then scale this in on the X axis just a little bit to kind of clean up some of that uh, disparity. There we go. All right, but uh, we don't need the bricks to be completely uniform, so we can pull these out. Maybe pull that one out a little bit. Uh, maybe we take this one, move it out just slightly. Maybe this comes out to there. Maybe we keep that one just where it's at. Push that one in a little bit. And then the last step for us is going to be, I'm gonna shrink this in just a little bit. And I'm just gonna extrude these up on the top, just a tad. And then add in a loop cut. Actually, let's do that in reverse. So add in the loop cut first so that there's kind of a center line, and then we can see it's actually two rows of bricks rather than just the one. Kind of pull that up a little bit. There we go. All right, then I'm gonna grab all of these faces, and just like we beveled the other pieces, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna add in a vertex group, call it bevel, and assign all of the faces that we have selected. Okay. All right, and these are the bricks. So let's go ahead and scale this down just a bit. I think maybe something like that is gonna be fine. You don't want your bricks to be too large and then just hit A and apply the scaling here. Now, we're not going to attach this to you know, the basic bricks. What we wanna do is actually duplicate this with a Shift D. Or actually, instead, let's create an Alt duplicate. All right, and then this is going to be the wall. Um, so we'll take that original bricks and move it over on the x-axis here. In fact, we can kind of even take it a little bit further over. And we're just gonna add a real quick subdivision surface modifier to see what our stones will look like. This is gonna give us our nice little cobblestone type look. Um, and then when we add in all of the extra pieces, things will be pretty good. So there we go. We have the basic bricks here. Uh, so let's go ahead and add in the path that these things are gonna take. So select the wall and just hit Shift A. And uh, once again, we're gonna add in a path then we can actually delete all of these vertices because it doesn't matter for what we're going to do. Instead, let's look at this from the top. And this is where it's gonna really help if you happen to have a pen and tablet. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna have to draw and kind of configure a, uh, a circle. But with all of those vertices deleted, now we have the ability to draw some in. So over on the left-hand side, we have this draw vertex thing. And we're just gonna real quick draw a path going around our house and kind of matching up in the center. Something like that. 
Uh, and then what we're gonna do is just kind of dissolve some of the vertices that we don't need. So we can see we have uh, two on this side and we're gonna bring this one down so it kind of fits better. Something like that. Maybe we don't need that. We'll scale those to even on the y-axis there and just kind of kind of position these a little bit so that they're roughly in the same spot doesn't have to be perfect doesn't have to be perfect but it just needs to be kind of close no one's gonna judge your brick wall Okay, so we've got our path. Path is good. Let's make sure we rename this to wall path. And then parent it to the wall empty. Okay, and then we also wanna take the duplicate bricks that we made and also parent this to the wall empty. And we're gonna go ahead and just move it out of the wall itself and we'll just call the object wall. Make sure it's parented to the wall empty. And there we go. Now, we, the next part is we wanna add in an array modifier and we also want it to fit the curve. And so we'll then also add in a curve modifier just so everything is going to match. So we will then fit the curve of the wall path. We can see that it's going all the way around and then we can just set it to follow the curve of the wall path, which is gonna give us our walls. But we can still see each one of these individual objects. And the reason for that is that the subdivision surface modifier comes before our array modifier. So let's just move our array modifier, click and drag it up there, and then hit merge. And now we can see, well, I hit it twice. But now we can see that our brick wall, our bricks are pretty good. They're in place, they're where we want them to be. Um, you know, it's not too crazy. If we want to, though, we can we can definitely come in here and make some additional adjustments. Let's say we just want this brick to scale in a little bit. All right, but let me tell you, make sure that you are you know turning off the subdivision surface when you're working on this, because uh, otherwise it can get a little laggy. Turn it back on, there we go. All right, so we have our walls going all the way around. But now that we have our walls, it's time to add in the wall uh, endpoints. So let's go ahead, we can shrink out these objects here. And we're just gonna come over here to the object over here. Let's focus in on it with numpad period. And I'm going to bring the cursor over as well. Move this out of our way and add in a new cube. All right, we'll put that back into the pieces collection and call this in wall end or wall cap. Now we need to scale this thing way down. So towards the 3D cursor, we'll scale her down and uh, scale it on that shift Z. There we go, something like that. And once again, we're gonna add in the mirror modifier so we only have to work on the front half and the mirror will be duplicated. So move that over, turn on clipping, move it back, and then delete the face in the middle. And then I'm gonna make this much smaller because what we're gonna do is we're going to add an array modifier, but instead of having it move on the X axis, we're gonna move it on the Z axis. 
And what this will let us do is just real quick fine tune how tall this thing maybe should be. Um, we're not going to need six counts, but uh, this way we don't have to kind of recreate those bricks as we did before. But turn that off. No biggie. Okay. And we'll just extrude up one. Maybe take it to there. We'll grab the offset edge loop. That's good enough for me. You know what? Let's move this. Let's move this over and just add in another one. Something like that. You would just be using 150 cubes if not for my live streams. Oof. It's a lot of cubes, man. You gotta make sure you name your cubes. All right. We'll scale this in on the x-axis because the bottom stones here will be the large stones. And then we'll scale this one out and move it over on the x. There we go. Now, just like before, we want to add in two loop cuts in here uh, because we need to scale these out. There we go. Something like that to give us some space in between these stones. And then this is going to be pretty much the same as before. We want to add in that loop cut there to make sure that these stay where they need to. Then I'm going to grab all of these faces. And instead of just extruding, because now we're extruding in two different directions, we need to make sure we're using the extrude along normals. So we can extrude that out, something something like that is okay. We could also do uh, offset even if we want it to be perfectly square. I'm gonna do that, but it doesn't really matter because we're gonna add in a subdivision surface modifier. And this one we are going to put above the array modifier because I want this little brick pattern here to be like present when we add in our array. So there we go. We have our pretty base for the bricks and we'll just do maybe three of those. Look at that from the right hand side. Does that cover the wall? It does cover the wall. Let's see. Can we merge anything? No, no, we cannot. That's okay. You know what? But now that I'm looking at this, I think I want the middle stone to be on the bottom. So we'll just go back in here, hit A to select everything, and then scale Z negative one. And that'll flip that over for us. And you know what? I like that better. Um, you don't have to, but I like that better. So I'm gonna keep it. And I'm just gonna add in some extra detail here for the stones, I think. Um, we're gonna play around with how this looks. So we'll maybe pull this out just a little bit. Maybe move this out on the y-axis. Just don't maybe want the, the whole thing to feel uniform. weird add in an extra edge loop maybe scale the edge loop up there we go push this one in maybe add another edge loop here And 
know what? Let's turn off the array real quick. Just it'd be a little easier to uh, see what we're working with. It's not so uniform. All right, cool. Now we can turn on that. How's that look? You know what? That looks pretty good. I think I'm okay with that. YS Books, welcome to the stream. How you doing today, man? made the wall pieces so let's take a look at uh, you know doing this the easy way by using the walls array modifier so we have the ability to add some caps on the array modifier here uh, so let's go ahead and try to add the wall cap to the start which it adds no biggie that looks pretty good And then do the same thing with the wall end. Let's see if that comes across like I want it to come across. Uh, and it doesn't. It doesn't quite do that because it's getting kind of warped here due to the way the handles and the curvatures are doing. So we tried it. It doesn't work. That's okay. So we'll go ahead and get rid of both of those caps and everything. Uh, and also we'll go into the... We'll go into the wall path here and just adjust this path. So it does something like that, and then maybe we can pull this over. Something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be 100% aligned. Good enough. Okay. So. Now, what we need is the topper for the brick stone wall. So once again, we're gonna create a single, uh, a new piece here. So we're gonna add in a new cube and we'll call this uh, wall cap to our cap topper or maybe just topper. There we go, put that in the pieces. GC1, grab this top face and we're gonna just shrink that down. And then grab the whole thing, scale on shift Z. There we go. Okay. Maybe just a little bit larger. There we go. Okay. Hope you guys are having a great Saturday morning or Saturday evening, depending on where you're watching from. I'm gonna add in one more cube here. Scale this way down. Move it up. Okay, so we scale it up a little bit. There we go. Grab that top face, move this down, and scale it down. Something like that. Hmm. I'm definitely gonna have to fix Streamlabs. But there we go. Okay, and we're just gonna create a little place for maybe like a lantern to sit or something like that. So just kind of create a little section there. Hit E, right click and scale this out. Let me move this up just a bit, there we go. And hit I to inset and control to pull that in, something like that. And extrude all the way up to right about there, I think. 
That'll be good. Yeah, that works. Okay, then one more time. E, extrude, leave in place. Scale this out. Move it up a little bit. And then inset and take it up like that. Now we do need to add some detail here, so we'll add in uh, three loop cuts. I'm gonna grab this center edge loop, turn on proportional editing, and scale this in. But I only want it to affect the top, so we're gonna make the uh, this top piece. There we go. All right, and that's not quite doing exactly what I want, so we'll grab that top face here. bit better. Nice. Now I want these faces to be uh, kind of aligned. Quickest way to do that is to kind of fill this in maybe to right about there and then right click with the face loop selected and you can get some loop tools. Now this loop tool is an add-on that I have. Uh, you can It's a free one. You can get it and edit in preferences and then we can just do bridge and now it's selected through. So now the second thing we can do and set these maybe right there and then try that again. Well, it, it bridged them all right, but that's not what I wanted it to do. Okay, let's grab these internal faces here. And I guess we can delete these faces, no worries. And then grab these faces. All right, so that's gonna create for us a little bit of you know, what we're looking for. So now all we need to do is join them together with the other ones. So we'll just inset down close enough to where the faces interact, there we go, and then delete those faces. So now we can really quickly just join these edge looses together, or join these vertices together. Merge at center. Turn off proportional editing and move this down about there. Alright, so we've got some straggler faces here that need to be removed, so we can delete those faces. And this is a straggler edge, we can delete that edge. Okay, there we go. We're going to have to do the same thing at the top, so, you know, just bear with me for a second. So we can grab, you can see that these edges, oh, that's a face, isn't it? Delete the 
space, but okay, we leave the edges. That's fine. How am I coming along with the animated short? Well, I've got a couple of the assets modeled, um, but honestly, I've just gotten back into the groove, so not a whole lot is coming along with the animated short. Alright, bottom is done. Now let's do the top. So we'll just grab both of these, merge it center. So now we can get rid of those two faces that are there. We don't need them. And get rid of the leftover straggler faces. in. No worries. our lantern topper this looks good so what we'll do is we'll go to our wall cap go to the array to the cap and choose the end cap of topper and now we can see that that is there so let's create alt D and duplicate move this along the x-axis we're going to put it in place. Now, because this is the, you know, the original, what we also want to do is add a new mirror, new mirror modifier now. So we're going to add a new one and we're going to mirror it across the steps empty uh, on the Y axis. And there we go. And then we can just position this a little bit better on the Y. There we go. And boom. Now we have our wall. This wall cap one to go into the wall empty. There we go. So the next step for us is the sign. So let's move this 3D cursor back. Uh, let's do a little bit this direction. Put it inside the house uh, right next to it. So someplace like here, maybe. We'll create the empty. Or you know what? No, let's build it outside the wall. So that way it's a little easier. So we'll add in... Make sure we've got the sign collection selected. Add in an empty object. Name it sign empty. Uh, 
Okay, and then we are going to add in the pieces. So, add in the cube. And this will be the signpost. Uh, obviously, GZ1. That's good. Uh, maybe a little taller. Grab that top face. Just pull it up just a little bit. Uh, we just add in two loop cuts. So that way I can select this face. Oh. And move the 3D cursor here. At which point we'll add in one more cube scale it way down and let this be the cube that will actually hold our sign so then let us scale X thin that out just a little bit there we go So we have the basics for our sign post. Uh, let's make sure that that is parented to the sign empty. There we go. Not quite a mailbox. We're just going to be like a sign. Um, so this is actually a house, books, since you asked about my animated short. This is actually a house that will make an appearance in the animated short in the Mentor, Min, Minotaur village. Um, and so this sign post is going to be how they recognize, like, who's in what place because the minotaurs that i'm working on have uh they use rooms as like family logos and so like everything that they own gets kind of stamped with this family rune um and so this is going to have that family rune on it when all is said and done and it probably won't today just due to sake of time but but this is going to be a sign to let people know that hey these are these people All right, so we're gonna grab this edge loop or this edge right here, move the 3D cursor, and then uh, we're gonna add in a new empty object. Now this new empty is going to be uh, for a chain that we are going to create. So let's add a new empty, we'll call this chain. Now I'm also going to create a new collection under chain just because uh, the chain has a few different parts and I wanna be organized. So we'll call this, or make that in there, call that chain empty. Okay. And then we're also going to add in a torus. Now in the operator panel for the torus, what we want to do is set the major segments to four so that we end up with a square and then the minor segments to six. That'll just kind of make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, we want to rotate this on the x-axis 90 degrees. And then let's, well, no, actually, we'll keep the major segments four. And then let's drop the major radius way down, something like 0.2 will be fine. And the minor radius, let's do, I don't know, 0.15. Let's see how that goes. Okay, that's still too big. So we'll drop this down. All right, we're gonna, yeah, we'll take it to 0 0.4, 0 0.04. And I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller still. 0.11, let's do 0.1. Okay, so there we go, we have it. Now let's rotate this, turn off proportional editing, 
rotate it on the y-axis 45 degrees. So now you can see we have the very base for our chain link. It's really nice actually. Um, so I'm gonna add in a mirror modifier. No, sorry, not in a mirror modifier. We need an array modifier. And we're gonna set the factor here to eh, about 0.5. We want the chains to connect through. And then we wanna set object offset. Uh, and we'll choose the chain itself, which I don't think I've named. It's just Taurus. So let's real quick call it chain. Or sorry, we'll click on the empty. So we'll do chain empty. And there we go. We can see it's automatically going to switch 90 degrees. Okay. Uh, we don't need a constant offset, but there we go. We have it. Now, we do need to fix uh, the chain. We could add a new chain path, uh, and if you were wanting to like pose your chain, you, you could do that. I think a fixed count will be fine for this one. Uh, so maybe we do five chains, and maybe we set the offset factor uh, a little bit bigger, so 0 0.6, so it's actually like they're there. Then parent the chain to the chain empty, and then rotate the chain empty on the y-axis 90 degrees. So now the chain is gonna hang down. And we can scale down the chain empty to an appropriate size, there we go. And then on the chain, let's uh, add another array modifier here. Uh, so this way the chain is duplicated and we'll move it on the y-axis one. zero on the X uh, and then actually we're going to need to let's move this in the, in the negative direction we'll do something like that and then we can move the chain empty over on the X put it right about there I think like a negative seven that should be fine okay and then parent the chain empty to the sign empty uh, because now we can then, you know, rotate the thing and the chain is going to go with us. But then the last thing we want to add in here is the actual sign itself. So hit Shift A, add in one more cube. And obviously we don't need it that big, so let's go this way down. Something like that should be fine. Move this down. And if we look at this from the front, I'm just going to place it kind of roughly in the center. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, and then we will scale it up on the y-axis until it's roughly there. Move it down just a bit. And then scale this on the x. And there we go. And because of our chain, it looks like the chain is attached to the wood. How it's attached doesn't really matter, but it looks like it's attached. And that's really what matters. So then let's add in two loop cuts here and grab the opposite uh, sides, top and bottom edge loops on the sides. All right, and then we're gonna bevel. So control B, bevel this out a little bit. And then let's adjust some of those settings. Look at this and adjust some of those settings in the operator panel with F9. So I want two segments there. I think that'll be fine. And uh, let's take the shape inward okay it's not gonna set anything because it's all aligned so that's fine so what we'll do look at this from the front grab that edge and we're just gonna pull it in giving ourselves a nice little kind of worn cut out look and maybe that's too big so scale these down on the z-axis All right, and now we have our sign, so we can take our sign empty here and move this over. Uh, oh, we did not parent the cube to the sign empty. Make sure we name that sign. And put that in the sign, not the chain. So. And boom, there we go.
you know, or maybe, maybe you'd want to put that outside. Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna leave it there for a second. Uh, maybe I can go a little bit bigger with the ground. Not too much bigger, but but maybe just a little bit bigger. And then we can take this and take the sign empty and move it outside the house. All right, so everything is now modeled and blocked out. It's time to actually add in some detail. Good news is the the uh, you know the wall is done, uh, the sign is basically done. So Oaken, welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a good day, and I'm glad my basics courses have helped you a lot. All right, what are we at now? We are currently at two hours uptime, two hours of modeling instruction. Uh, so let's get in and add some detail, but we are done basically with all the detail of the environment. So I'm just gonna go ahead, hide the environment pieces because now it's time to work on the other stuff. Dean Stevens, well, thanks for already being subscribed. I appreciate it. <laughs> and if you're not subscribed and you're enjoying this tutorial series, do me a favor, Hit that subscribe button, maybe the like button too. It really helps out the channel. We're trying to get to 25,000 this year. So, okay. Uh, so now let's uh, add in the roof tiles. This is gonna be, well, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna be a little bit of a pain, um, <laughs> but it'll be okay. It'll be okay when it's all done. Francie, welcome back to the stream, man. It has been a while. How are you doing? All right, so select the roof here and we're actually going to create a new collection inside this we'll call it tiles and we're not going to add in the tiles right quick we're going to add in actually a wood beam that's going to go across them so shift s cursor to selected make sure that it's just grabbing this front cursor or this front edge right here and we're going to add in a cube and uh, we don't need it to be that big obviously so let's scale this down and this is going to be kind of a wood uh, thing going across All right, and then we're gonna scale this up on the y-axis Till it over Steps there we go uh, Can we do the tile like we did the wall yes and no You'll see what I mean in a second. So with the tiles, you kind of got to decide how much variety you want in your tiles. Um, I want a, a few. So we're going to do three sets of three tiles, and then we'll use an array modifier. So we won't have to be tiling the entire house. But we are going to do a little bit of tiling here. All right. So this object right here, this is going to be front beam. And then we need another tile or another beam on the back. So we'll grab this entire edge loop and repeat. Weird that we grabbed the entire thing and it sent me there. That doesn't look to be the middle. Okay, I guess it is. All right, uh, and then we'll just duplicate this, Alt-D, duplicate. Move it on the uh, Y axis. No, sorry. Uh, shift S, selection to cursor, there we go. Rotate this 90 degrees, boom, and scale it on the X. duplicate so no problem we will come in here to this and we'll set this as its own so there we go it's 
It's okay if it goes into the chimney. We just don't want it to poke out the other side. There we go. Francie, I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing all right. All right, so there we go. We have our top beam and our front beam, so. Now, let's actually work on the tiles. We'll take both of these, put this in roof. And make sure that uh, both the front and the top beam are parented to the roof. There we go. Okay, so now select your tiles, and uh, we're going to. Man, I tell you, this is going to be this is going to be a bit annoying, but it'll also work really well. So, what we're going to do? We're going to take this object. And we're going to add in a cube, obviously, because that's what we've done with every new thing that we've done. So, add a cube, scale this down, scale the whole thing down a little bit, okay? Let's look at this from the front. We're just going to rotate it. We're going to rotate it to match roughly with the house, okay? Then we'll move this forward on the y-axis, something like that. And let's scale this in on the y. So, there's going to be tile number one, something like that, okay? Then, look at it from the front. Shift D to duplicate and place it above. Now, the reason we're placing these from the front is that I don't want. Let's change this to normal. I don't want them to uh, leave the sides. Like, I want the sides to be completely aligned because that'll really help when we get into uh, using the array modifier. So, just real quick, one more time, Shift D, move it down just like this, and place it. Okay. Now, we do need to make some adjustments, um, but this looks kind of good. So, let's look at this from the front, move this down a little bit. Having made this already, we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of the unwrapping now because having made this already, it's gonna be so much easier to partially unwrap this now than it will be later. So what we're gonna do is actually grab all four corners on each tile. Right click and mark as a seam. And then we're gonna real quick, we're gonna hide the roof just so we can grab these back three edges and mark that as a seam. Now, we can grab everything, bring back the roof, shift D, and move this over on the Y axis. There we go. Do something, something like that. Okay, they do need to intersect, but they don't need to be like perfectly on top of each other. And we're gonna do that one more time. So, shift D, and then Y, to move it over. Okay. Now, the last piece that we need to do before we can create the individual fields for these tiles is add in a couple of extra uh, loop cuts. So, Control R, scroll up twice, and just add in loop cuts to each tile. Okay, now we've done that, but let's add our modifiers and then we can add some variety and we'll be good to go. So we wanna take the array modifier here um, and actually we want to add in a mirror modifier first. So we'll add in a mirror. We will move the mirror above that and we will mirror the top beam object. There we go. And then for the array modifier, we want to do this in the Y direction of one not the X direction. And now you can see that they're there. And so now we can make our uh, our tiles different. So we can start 
and just kind of shape them how you want them to be shaped. It, like I said, it really doesn't matter. You just want to prevent uh, these faces from moving, like at all. You want these faces to stay perfectly aligned. Um, otherwise, the mirror modifier isn't going to work exactly like you want it to. But that only matters for these outside faces and these outside faces, like the farther ones over there. Um, doing the insides doesn't really matter. You can make those intersect however you want. You can move them around however you please. It does not matter. And if you want to add in some extra loop cuts, you totally can. Do something like that. Maybe just pull that one down and pull the face out a little bit. So just have fun with it. Really. Set this back to global. So that one's fine. Alright, and so now we've got some decent, uh, differently shaped tiles. You can go in here, like I said, you can keep playing around if you want to. I'm, I'm actually going to be okay with this. Do something like that, I think. Alright, but we've got a roof tile, and we can see it's mirrored across to the other side, just like we want it to be. And because we took the time to mark those seams beforehand, we don't have to worry about trying to fight through all three of those things to actually, you know, create them. So now we can turn back on the array modifier and boom, there we go. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to duplicate this. We'll call this tiles or front tiles. And shift D duplicate move these over on the x-axis here. There we go. And what we want to do for this one, we can set this to factor of one on the x, zero on the y. We want to mirror from the front beam to the top beam. And we want to mirror across the y-axis. We don't want to necessarily mirror across the x.
let us apply the rotation. There we go. There we go. So apply the rotation a couple of times and you'll be good. Uh, and then let's take this in the negative direction. Now that does extend a bit too far. So what we need to do is just come in here and scale this on the X until it connects. There we go. Move this over to come out a little bit. Yeah, there we go. All right, and that's good. Muhammad, welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? Now, from the right-hand side, we can see that it's definitely not following the curvature here. Uh, so we just need to adjust this. No worries. So what we're going to do is just come in here. And uh, I'm going to select all of those faces right there. Control L. And hide them. And then do the same thing here and we'll work on it one at a time. There we go. We can hide these. Actually, no, we can't. Let's bring those back. We can hide these. And then we need to You having a bit of a problem in sculpting if I accept questions? Well, I do accept questions, um, but for the joy of 3D art, we are um, kind of making models together. So you can ask questions either on one of the sculpting videos for something that you're sculpting, or you can join the Discord in the link, or there's a link in the description if you want. Um, and then, you know, someone in the Discord or myself, when I have time, can help you out. Otherwise, yeah, there's really not, um, I'm not accepting questions about sculpting this week. Next week, however, we will be doing, or not next week, but in two weeks when the Joy of 3D Art has its third episode, we will be doing some sculpting. So that would be a time to ask questions about sculpting. But if you want help now, like I said, either leave a comment on a video and I'll get to it or, um, you know, join the Discord and ask the questions there. Okay. And for this last one, this one is pretty good, actually. I think that one's I think that one's okay. So let's get out of X-ray. Boom. There we go. Oh, uh, you know what? I think the only thing that I need to do for those. We just need to rotate these down just a little bit and then G Z down just a tad. So they're actually connecting. Boom. All right, and our roof has been you know, modeled. There we go. Now we just need this last little piece here for the back roof. So shift D one last time, move it forward. Uh, and then we can actually get rid of the mirror modifier. We'll keep the array, uh, but then let's rotate this 180 degrees. We're gonna drop this way down. We may only need two. Move this over. Move it down. All right, and there we go. That is good enough. What we really, really want to, we could shrink these up along the Y axis, something like that. Where's my pink beard? Uh, well, keeping a beard dyed pink is hard when you have an actual job, but uh, 
when I hit 10,000 subscribers, we'll be doing a video, I'll be dying it, I'll be doing a couple of things, and if we can hit 10,000 before I have to go back to work, or if we hit it after I, um, you know, am working from home permanently full time, then I'll just try my best to keep my beard dyed pink. But uh, definitely at 10,000, we will dye the beard pink. Right, and I'm just going to reposition some of these real quick, just like we did last time. Control L. Oh. Hey, game! Welcome to the stream. How you doing today? Yeah, I can't quite. I can't quite go into an office with uh, with a pink beard. My boss lets me get away with a lot, but I don't. I don't think I would get away with that. <laughs> All right, there we go. Roof tiles are done. So this is the front. This are the top tiles. And here we have the back tiles. And we'll parent all three of these to the roof. Now we can kind of see that these are poking out through the back, so let's grab these, scale it in just a little bit on the y-axis here, or actually let's move it just a little bit on the y to correct that, we don't want them to be seen. So now we can scale it in just a little bit on the y, and there we go, that's going to be just fine those go through yep we want those to kind of connect with the house that's fine perfect perfect all right so now let's work on getting some detail into these windows so just real quick I'm gonna grab the first face there I'm just gonna inset it boom done and then extrude inward until just before we intersect with the house shift s cursor to selected and add in a cube. We just need a really small cube here. This will serve as kind of the cross guard. So we'll scale this on the x-axis. Right about there. Duplicate that, leave it in place. Rotate that on the y-axis 90 degrees and scale on the y, sorry, on the z. There we go. Now just grab this face, move it forward on the y-axis to cover it so that there's some actual depth there. And the detailing for that window is done. Simply rinse and repeat that on the others. And then we'll go to that back window here, do the same thing. Okay, one last thing, and this is the door. This will be the last thing we do to model, and then it's just a bunch of cleanup work, unwrapping, and texturing. So what we're gonna do here is actually scale this down 
pretty far on the x-axis to right about there, I guess. And then we'll add in two loop cuts, scale these up on the z-axis to right about there. And then what we need to do is grab the offset edge loop and pull this out to, I don't know, something there, make sure it's even, and then adjust something like that. And the reason we're doing this, we'll then dissolve these edges, but the reason we're doing this is that what we want is to create kind of a, uh, like a, a wooden board that's gonna go across. Make it look like the door is held together. So let's do individual origins here, scale up on the Z axis a little bit. There we go. That's fine, cool. So then we'll grab these edges. Actually, let's hide the cottage real quick. Grab all of these edges. I'm just gonna bevel it slightly. And then we'll set the segment widths there and drop the width down to like 0 0.01. That's fine, cool. Now we can move this over on the x-axis and add an array modifier and just go to the door. And there we go our door. The door is nice and modeled. Let's bring back the cottage. There we go. Maybe the door opens inward. That'll be fine. Alright, and if we bring back everything, there we go. We have our house. Okay. So, now that the house is modeled, we need to do some pretty major, uh, pretty major modeling stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create some different uh, materials here to kind of help us out. So what we're gonna do is go to the material tab. We're gonna need a sign material. So call it sign. Then we're gonna select all of the sign objects and we will add it to the sign zero zero one. But yeah, because that's the one from the new one. All right, we'll also grab that chain object, put that on sign zero zero one, there we go. All right, and then we need Now we need a wall material. Make sure this is using the wall. And this one is using the wall. And the topper itself can go to the wall piece. Should also be using the wall. Alright, and uh, we'll put these two together, so we'll create a stone. And then we'll make sure that the step is also using the stone one. There we go. And you know what, we'll, we'll make the base also add the stone one. And this base. 
All right, and what I'm doing is basically allowing everything to share the same texture space. So then uh, we'll create a door. We don't need that to share the sign. So we need a door and windows. And make this also have the door and windows and all of the windows have the door and windows. All right, and then we'll create a cottage material. And we'll make sure that the cottage itself is using the cottage and all of the posts are using the cottage. Cool. Also, the roof can use the cottage as well. And we'll make the chimney. Use the cottage. All right, and then we want to add in a uh, roof material. And we'll apply the roof material to all of the uh, tiles and the beams. I believe that is everything. I can hide the pieces now. Um, and it's time to just start unwrapping. So, start with the house. It'll be a little easier to unwrap most of this. So, that stone selected. Come over here. that as a seam there so it just rips off and actually you know what we'll clear the seam on that so that our UV map looks like that for the stone steps no biggie also go back here so make it a little easier to view things now we can do the uh, actually what is this this is the stone so we need more stone material All right so these okay So I'll hide the roof for this at this point. Hmm. And uh, for this, it's going to be a little, a little aggravating to try to unwrap it. So what we're gonna do is just make sure that we don't have any of these bottom faces. So let's go up and hide the ground and delete all of these bottom faces.
we don't have to get this one perfect. We do just need to get it close. And I think we can get it close by just ripping off the... Uh, So we have these are sharing the stone and we also have the steps that are sharing the stone. And then where is that? Uh, in the back of these, okay. So select everything, uh, all of those objects that share the stone and unwrap them into the same UV space. Now we do have a problem uh, with with this stone, and that's simply because you know we have faces here. Uh, so let's go ahead and delete that face because we don't need to see the bottom. We're not going to be rendering the bottom of the stone. So, now that that's done, let's go ahead and uh, add some real quick texture here. So we can just go to Texture Paint. And we need to add in a stone base color, no big deal. Now I already have color palettes set up. Um, I get my color palettes from adobe.color.com. They have a nice little color wheel and some options for searching. We talked about that in the first Joy of 3D Art episode. So feel free to check that out if you want. Um, from there though, we do need to create a base color. So we're gonna just put these at 2048. And let's set them to color grid and hit okay. And we can see for all of our objects that now share the stone, they now have the color grid applied. So we're going to select the stone, go back to texture paint, and we're just going to add some real quick base color. Uh, and then I'll show you guys like the, the hand painting process, and then we'll call it done. Okay, so for the base color here, we have a stone base color. And uh, let's just go ahead and fill in stone with this kind of nice light gray. I think that's going to turn out okay. All right, then back to object mode, grab the next object. And uh, I want this one to be a little bit darker. So still with that stone palette, we'll go, um, you know what, I'm going to pick just a slightly darker color here. And we'll use this one. And we'll fill in that stone base there with a slightly darker color. Back to object mode. Grab this base. And uh, I want this to be like really dirty. So we want that to be really dark. We'll do the same thing for the other side. There we go. We have our nice little base in there. We'll add some hand-painted color to kind of brighten that up and make some of the details pop, but we're just putting base color on for now, and I think that looks good. 
All right, and back to object mode. I don't think there's any other object that we have that will share this stone workflow. So let's take a minute and make sure that we save our image. So we'll just save it. need it and uh, then let's move on to the next little piece here we can do the uh, let's do the cottage the base colors for the cottage all of these are shared perfect so to unwrap this just grab a single edge mark as a seam and then we're just gonna grab the top three across the you know the top and then actually we'll just grab and delete the bottom face because we don't need a face like that. It's okay. All right, and if we go back to the UV editing tab, this will be a little bit easier to see, but you can see there we go. We'll do the same thing for these. Just pick an edge, mark that as a seam. face okay. all right cool for the chimney here the chimney is going to be pretty much done the same way just grab one of these edges delete the bottom face and then we're also going to delete these or we're also going to pull off this top face here um, of this whole cottage thing we need to actually grab the cottage and we're gonna clear out some of this stuff because we don't need like I said the bottom faces so we'll delete the bottom faces and then we can delete any and all hidden faces faces that you know won't be seen uh, and then we can also just move these other edges forward because they don't matter because once we add in that you know once we add that roof in you're not gonna see those anyway so we can actually even get rid of that whole top section so let's hide the roof again and get rid of all of these faces as well so that way we're not applying any texture to things that we're not gonna see It's just going to make texturing a little bit faster for us. Uh, and then we don't need these faces either. We do need the connecting ones, but we don't need those faces. And then the roof. There we go. So we're not seeing anything underneath that could potentially cause us issue. Yeah. And we're good with that. So hide the roof, and uh, let's go ahead, select the posts, the cottage, and the chimney, hit tab, and unwrap together. Now, the real problem here, uh, let's actually turn on live unwrap, okay, it is turned on. So we'll just mark that as a seam, and there we go, and now the whole base of the house is unwrapped based on this scene being hit seam being hidden by the post uh, and you can see that it kind of all unwraps really nicely right there all right and that one unwraps 
fine on its own, so cool. All right, now for this, what we wanna do is come over to the UV and we wanna hit pack islands, which is gonna pack them up a little bit better. And then let's see, can we go ahead and average the island scale and then pack islands? There we go. Then everything is averaged. All right, perfect. And make sure that with your pack uh, islands that your 0 0.003, that'll keep it far enough apart so that when we apply our textures, we won't accidentally bleed over onto anything. Uh, and you know what? Let's go ahead and just add one more scene too. There we go. And then average island scale and pack islands. Okay, and you know what? Maybe we can apply the roof texture as well. So for the roof, all we're gonna do is just unwrap. That's fine, because that's all gonna be one color. So, and I believe the roof has the cottage material anyway. Yep, so we wanna make sure we've got the roof, the post, the cottage, and the chimney all selected. And then we can unwrap them all together. And there we go. I don't like the way that these UV islands got created, so I just have everything selected over there, and I'm gonna reposition these, just because. So I think I can do a better job than the automated textures here, like this. make for a, a more easy to read UV map where everything isn't so close together okay all right and now it's time to add some base color to our texture here or to our cottage here so with the cottage selected let's go into texture paint and add in a new base color. And we can do color grid again. And that'll be just fine. Now I like uh, a plaster house, so I also have a pal plaster palette. And uh, let's put in that for the base color of our house. If we take a look at that with the material preview, that's not a bad color for the house. Leaves us plenty of room for adding some extra like shadows or whatever. Um, but maybe they want to, you know, paint their house a nice light brown or light beige. That's too bright, so let's go back with that. Maybe, maybe even a little darker. Nah. All right, there we go. That works for me. All right, make sure we save our image and then, well, actually, yeah, we'll save the image just to make sure that the image is actually, uh, you know, gonna be there, but then we'll save it once we've added all the color and everything too. So back to object mode, base color for these posts. will be a nice dark brown from our wood palette. 
something like that. No, we'll go darker. Perfect. All right, and once again, just go darker. We're good. Grab the roof. And uh, I do want a little bit of a lighter one, so let's try the, that. No, let's try this color. Maybe that'll work. No, let's go a little darker. There we go. All right, so the roof has been set. Grab the chimney. And we're gonna go to our stone palette again, just because. And uh, we'll just real quick add that color. And that'll be fine. Maybe a little, nah, we'll go dark. It's fine. All right, our house is kind of coming together. Bring in the windows and the doors. Okay, so Next up, we need to UV unwrap the windows and the doors. So for the door, it's gonna be very, very simple. Let's actually go ahead and hide the cottage. We don't need it. And we can hide the posts and we can hide the roof. Okay, real quick, hide the door frame, pick an edge. ground got in my way. Got it. Door frame is done. Let's go over here. Where's the cottage? All right, cool. Perfect.
right, so we just did the cleanup. Uh, now the rest of it is, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Just gotta mark that as a seam. And mark the face as a seam, there we go. Alright, so, I don't know if you guys just picked up the cackling of my wife. <laughs> Love her laugh. Okay, so we have the doors and windows. Let's grab all that. There we go. Unwrap it all together. Perfect. Make sure everything has the scale applied. Unwrap it again, there we go. Some of the things were off because the scale wasn't applied. So then we can go ahead and average the island scales, that's fine, and then pack the islands, and that's cool. But once again, I'm gonna pull these off just because primarily I want uh, the three windows faces to be up here. kind of on their own and then I can you know put the rest of them in there Did I really need to arrange all of these? No, is the answer. But I feel like this gets a better representation of all of the models faces now that I've done it manually. All right, cool. So now we can add in some basic base colors. Yep, that's fine, just like that. Cool. And for the door, go back to the wood palette, and you know what, I think we're gonna make the door the same color as the roof, and that's fine. Now we do have an, an also a really cool technique. Just tab into edit mode real quick. Uh, hit everything, control L to select everything. And then we can, you know, paint this a different color. So if we wanted to make this a little darker, we can. So now you can see now our, our door has two tones and we will go in and add some additional hand painting and whatever to this. But uh, we can see that, you know, that does make the door look a little bit different right off the bat. Ravage Sock, welcome to the stream. How you doing today? All right, do the same thing with the door frame. I'm gonna get into texture paint mode. Boom, door frame.
All right, so we want everything except the uh, except this face to be selected. So we'll just deselect that one face, go back to texture paint, turn that on, and fill that in. I'm doing all right, Ravage. I'm doing all right. Just finishing up or adding uh, some base color to the model that we spent the first two hours of the stream making. Add that color there, that looks good. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I think. Oh man. Well, I knew I messed something up. Dang it. All right, well, I messed up the textures. Okay, that's fine. Uh, goodness. All right, so let's go back to this real quick. Uh, so what I did wrong was these are not supposed to be sharing the same textures, and yet they were which was very, very weird. So, not sure why they were, oh, it's because this, it's because this one, this little traitor, should have been sharing the doors and windows. Material. Instead. Bugger. Well, at least now I know. So let's just go in here real quick, once again. Back to texture paint on the roof. We can add in these colors very quickly thanks to color palettes. A little lighter brown there, boom. Let's go back to that one, we'll do the lighter brown, there we go. Uh, let's go back to object manager. Yep. All right, posts. Dark wood. chimney there we go now take a minute save your work save that texture file there we go cottage base one the cottage texture is good so now we can work on the doors and windows Make sure that that's right. Doors and windows base color. Yes, that one's good. Doors and windows is good. Good. Maybe I only messed up that one and it caused the rest of it to mess up. All right, well, let's make sure we save the doors and windows. Yeah, I feel like if you don't mess up during the process, you're either a complete master or something went terribly wrong and you didn't notice. Here we go, texture paint. But let's go into edit mode real quick, make sure that's all right. That's all we have selected, grab that. And for the back wood window, Grab that color, there we go. Yeah. 
save everything. Make sure we save the file. All right, and I don't think there's anything. Yep, doors and windows are good. So now let's add in that uh, color paint. We'll start with the circle window just because it's really close. Edit mode. Just grab that one face there. And uh, all we want to do is update this one face. So we'll go to the candlelight palette that I have set up and we're just going to grab this light yellow color. Now that looks hideous, um, but it's okay. We'll come in here with the, actually, let's go back, set that color, because we're going to do the rest of it with the draw brush. Make this bigger, and then just come in here and paint over this color. Uh, make sure, yeah, let's put it to mix. Now, the colors are slightly different, um, but you don't have to worry about if they'll be really noticeable because we'll do the next part with this light color here and then we'll just kind of trail off to the end and we can see that that mix comes in quite nicely On to the next window. Just grab that back face there. And do the same thing. So we're going to start with the fill brush, fill in that area, go back to the draw brush. sure we've got the paint masking on yep and then here we go Windows are done. Grab myself a little water. Do I do these live stream frequently? Yes, Ravage. Actually, I'm doing the Joy of 3D Art. We're doing a different 3D model to completion um, every two weeks. So I'll definitely be here every two weeks. As far as regular content or regular live streams though, uh, currently I don't have a dedicated space for YouTube because I'm sharing it with my work from home office. Um, so right now, live streams are really only happening every two weeks because that's all I can stand being in this studio space. <laughs> but yeah, once, uh, you know, at the end of the year, I should be moving, buying a bigger house or buying a house in general um, and then We'll have a dedicated space and we'll be doing some more live streams regularly so if you want to catch those 
and you're enjoying the stream and you want to catch those or you want to see more tutorials or more of these joy of 3d arts uh, feel free to go ahead and subscribe it really helps out the channel all right so we want to get into uv editing again and we're going to uv edit uh, the roof tiles and stuff together so for this, uh, we can hide the back beam. Where is that? It's gonna be under the roof. So we can hide the top beam. Definitely leave the front beam. Just delete this face because we don't need it. Welcome to the stream. How you doing, man? And I, I am taking your advice. I'm taking, like, I brought it up to my marketing guy, and he really liked your idea. So we are going to figure out how to implement your wonderful idea. Alright, real quick, we're just going to hide the cottage. because we've already got all three of these objects unwrapped from when we created them, we're just gonna grab all those objects, hit A, and unwrap. And we can see that all of these things get unwrapped and it's pretty easy uh, to see them. Ah, but we missed a step. Bummer. All right, well, the thing that we missed, apparently, yeah, you can go back and uh, you can go back and watch these. I leave the live streams up for anyone who ever wants to go through them. Uh, they are a long-running or will be a long-running series on the channel. Um, just hide everything except the house here. And we just want to mark that as a seam. Grab that one. Mark that as a seam. All right. And so we can kind of see that some of these are getting unwrapped. I was hoping to avoid doing this, but uh, we'll go ahead and hide it so it doesn't appear. We also need to hide the roof object itself. There we go. Mark those as seams. because they are literally the exact same models.
All right, you know what we're gonna do? We're going to change this up a little bit because this is giving us some problems. So let's add a mirror modifier here on the x-axis and uh, let's just remove half this object. And turn on clipping, there we go. And now if we check all of the objects together, try to unwrap it, that's much better. It is much, much better. Well, thanks, Ravage. I'm glad that you were able to stop by. Have yourself a good rest of your day. And I look forward to seeing you again in the future. All right, where is this face? Where is this? Right here. Maybe it was the scale was so bad. There we go. It was the scaling. Got it. All right. Okay. Not too bad. We've unwrapped it. Life is good. Let's go back to texture paint. Grab these front ones. And add in the roof base color. There we go. So, for the roof base color, we are doing red tiled roofs. So, I'm going to start with this medium red here. This wood will just, you know, go the dark wood like the rest of the house. There we go. All right. Let's go back to the red roof tile palette. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by darkening these up and then uh, adding in the light. So we're going to kind of go where the where the darkness is or should be painting on the shadows. Uh, and so we're going to make sure that our fall off is set to smooth, our stroke is space, and then let's just bring our thing down a little bit. And then uh, we're going to paint some shadows on here. So we've got some shadow at the base of the tile. A little biggie, that can be kind of dark, that's fine. You can see that's already looking pretty nice, actually. Um, but then we also want to make sure that we're taking the shadow and putting it on the bottom of the tile. And we'll even put some along the side of the tile here. Just to be like, maybe, you know, it's dirty. Maybe it gets, maybe it gets a little dirty. So we'll put some, some darkness on the sides here. There we go. All right, and then paint some more shadow on here. And then, now that we've covered the big shadow, 
come down to the bottom. Really kind of finish out the shadow here. It doesn't really matter if you're painting on the opposite side. It's okay. No one's going to see the underside of these tiles anyway. But now what we want to do is we want to change from mix to darken. And we just want to kind of cover over some of the darker places. So anywhere your tile kind of goes in. And if you're looking at it, right, like that, where it goes from here down to here, that's going to be a darkened place. So we're just going to add some darkness around each side. There we go. Kind of lightly go over it again and again. Kind of maybe rough up the tile a little bit with the darkness. You know, they're probably dirty, haven't been cleaned in a while. Alright, so we've got some darkness on the tile, which is great, this is what we want. And then what we'll do is we're going to grab this bright red here, and we're going to change from darken to lighten. And then we're just going to go along kind of the raised edges. We'll bring our cursor down smaller and kind of lighten up these raised edges here. So we're going to go along every edge we have. Now where it's dirty, you don't want to lighten it up too much, just enough to like, hey, there's an edge there, like you're kind of outlining it. So you have, if we zoom back, you can still see what we're working on. And we can still see that, hey, that's an edge and it doesn't blend into the shadow below. Oh, that's too big. That's definitely not what we want here. How did I do that? Accidentally increase the size of my Windows taskbar. Gotta love it. Alright, so we just outlined that. We'll outline this one. Remember, just outline enough. Get the edges in there. Now, for this tile, this tile is kind of up, as we can see. So there is a very clear, like, divot here. So we're going to make this section a little darker. We're going to make this section a little lighter. So we'll just come in here with the lighten and just go over it like we did with the darkened areas. We're just bringing it up to give some distinction to this area and then. Make sure we also go back and highlight the edges. Right, we have a couple other places we can kind of do that too, so we'll brighten up this section right here. And along here, we need to make sure that we still highlight. extra little, we'll say it's a light strip right here. Yeah. 
that is doing what we want it to do. And then we're going to come in here with this really black black and we'll just drop the strength down and uh, we want to darken again we just want to add some real dark areas to this to the dirt that we put in there the only one that I don't think looks right so we'll just kind of cover that back up a little bit kind of blend out the brightness that was there and there we go it's looking pretty good if we bring in the material preview see the tiles have some depth to it which is nice all right and then we're just gonna repeat and uh, do it again grab the next set Grab this darker one here, and uh, we'll kind of dirty it up in a little bit different way this time. Still darken, still strength, but we'll just kind of cover, just kind of blend it all together. So, so let's switch that to mix, and kind of mix these colors. Don't be afraid to just kind of mess up and have fun with what you're, what colors you're adding. All right, and now we can paint the shadow. at the view so we can move around a little bit easier. Hope everyone is having a lovely start to their weekend.
So Fable, what are you working on these days? Since we're just kind of painting at the moment. We've got some freedom to have some other conversations. So what are you what have you been up to? What have you been working on? Other than offering me sage advice. You don't have a current project 3D wise, but you were thinking of doing a couple of small environment pieces. Really? Why don't you why don't you work on a, a house? You know? Why don't you work on a house piece? A little cottage. Oh, I'm glad to hear I inspire you. So that's got a light in here. I mean, this is, that's what the joy of 3D art is, after all. It's supposed to be a place where we can just enjoy our art together and have some fun making some stuff. Share it. Next week, we're going to be sculpting, though. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to sculpt a Pokemon. Still deciding which one, though. So if you're interested, check out the Facebook poll that'll come out on Monday. I'm gonna have a couple of different Pokemon to choose from. You guys can help pick the direction. Yeah, you wanna take a look at Substance Painter? I see that. Substance Painter is one of those things that I would love to get my hands on if I didn't have to pay for it. But I also don't have time to like learn another software. So for a long time, I feel like Blender is just going to be the only tool that I can really know. Incineroar. Oh, there's an idea. Yeah, the time the time factor really becomes kind of more important the less of it you have, man. You're like, when you have all the time in the world, you're just like, I wish I had something to do. And then and then when you have nothing, or when you have a ton of stuff to do, you're just like, I wish I had more time. Like the, ne the never ending ability to not have enough based on the stage of life. Your stage is a wee bit later than my stage? Oh, because you're older than me. Okay, got it. I was confused for a second. Hey DNZ, welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? You're learning Blender. How long did it take me to get a decent level where you're able to create individual objects, etc.? Um, I mean, it took. I had a good teacher, and by teacher I mean like when I started learning 3D modeling, 
um, I had to learn quickly because I, I was a teacher at the time and I had to start teaching 3D modeling. So I learned from cgcookie.com and they had some great tutorials and stuff uh, geared towards more professional people wanting to learn Blender. So, I mean, I would say it took me, I don't know, a month to get to the point where I was creating, you know, things. Um, however, I will say that it took me about a year or two before I was like, this is good. This is something that I actually am proud of. Um, it's not, but that, but that's mostly because I didn't spend a whole lot of time with it. So I probably spent about three months of total time throughout the year working in Blender when I wasn't teaching. Um, and I didn't really get, I didn't really start getting good at Blender until about two years ago when I started live streaming. Um, because then I started live streaming, started a YouTube. I actually had a, I was streaming on Twitch a couple of times a week. Um, and so I encountered some really cool people on Twitch who were helping me improve and, um, you know, and I was doing it regularly. So I would say, I would say about four to five months of solid practice. Um, and you'll be like, all right, I'm, I'm really good. But if you want to, if you want to fast track and you're learning Blender, you feel free to check out some of my other stuff on the channel. Um, if you like the tutorials and stuff, or you want to keep doing these Joy of 3D Art streams that I do every other week, uh, feel free to subscribe. That would be great. I'm trying to, trying to get to a, 25,000 subscribers this year. Also means though I need to come up with some new series of content because right now I'm just coasting on what I currently have. It's time to time to produce some more in addition to the joy of 3D art. Well, I appreciate that, DNZ. I appreciate that. Most of my, I'll tell you this, just because people, I don't want people to like enter my channel um, with some weirdness. So I do have some like one shot tutorial creations and I do have some, some kind of series that I do, but uh, a lot of my content is organized into playlists and that comes from back when I uh, was a teacher in a classroom uh, and I wanted my students to learn the tools in a particular order and stuff. So if you check out my basics of modeling course, you'll notice that it's got a lot of the tools in it. Uh, and that it's kind of designed to where you'll learn every single tool. And at the very end of the playlist, there is like a model of sword where you use most of the tools that you've learned, or you have the opportunity to use most of the tools that you've learned um, into a, a kind of a culminating project. So the, the tutorials are meant to be watched in order uh, with the exception of like the sculpting course. I think that one's, that one's kind of just like, here's all the, the sculpting tools. And then I have a lot of live streams. So like a lot of live streams. <laughs> so you are, you know, more than welcome to check those out, leave comments. I'll try to answer. If you're interested in joining the discord, you can join the discord. There's a link in the description. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty active on there when people have questions. I'd, I'd say the thing is kind of dead most of the time, but that's okay because we're just, we're just respecting each other's privacy. But it is a good place to post your artwork and with the joy of 3D art, we do these streams every couple of weeks. I kind of walk through the whole process. If you want to check this whole stream out, DZN, you'll actually be able to recreate the full cottage uh, that we're working on today. Afterwards, I know this is like a three hour live stream, uh, four hours at this point, I guess. Um, but I'll just show you everything here. Let's go back to object mode. It'll be a little easier to bring all this stuff in. But this is the full thing. We've gotten to this point. So you're more than welcome, like definitely go check this out, build the whole thing. Um, I walk through every part of it. I've walked through every part of it in the live stream. I would love to see your work in the Discord. If you take a you know quick screenshot, you finish it out. Uh, 
All right. It was a spoon. Very nice. Yeah, in fact, if you want to check out some, I mean, if you want to check out the first one, if you're still at the modeling stage, you want to check out an easy one, I think starting with weapons is generally the best place to start when modeling. But that could just be personal preference for me. But the first joy of 3D art was a uh, modeling a double-sided axe. So that's a full tutorial there. You'll find it on my channel in the playlist as well um, for these joy of 3D art stuff. But I think it's a pretty good way to be. Pretty good way to get started, I meant. And then you'll have a cool double sided axe. Alright, there we go. I'm good with that. Uh, let's see. What's next? We want to work on the sign next because the sign is going to be pretty easy. So, this has the sign material, right? So, does that, and so does the chain. Is the chain holding that material? That should should be the sign material. Weird that that was the wall. Okay. Right, into UV editing. So let's actually go ahead and hide the house collection because now we are on to the the sign stuff. Here we go. That is a seam. Go along the bottom here. There we go. The sign is now unwrapped. Grab this. And uh, real quick. chain all right so we'll grab all three objects tab you and unwrap and there we go and then into texture paint mode we need to create the sign texture base color there we go color grid as expected So we have the sign currently selected. So let's switch over to our wood. Let's grab that and put that on there. I think that's going to be a good color to start with. Back to object mode. Grab the sign. Post. And uh, there we go. And then for the chain, we'll come down here and grab the stone and maybe that. There we go. So what do you guys think about the uh, the game stock? The GameStop stock? Have you guys done anything about that? Alright, so for the top, ah, uh, shoot. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would agree with you on that. Definitely, yeah, definitely not crazy about how uh, definitely not crazy about how Robin Hood acted there preventing the preventing the rich from losing their money. Definitely not how Robin Hood would have actually behaved. All right, 
so you want to take this do it there I will say uh, it is quite ironic but I will say this um, the game stock the game stop stock thing has caused the rest of the market to go down and I just convinced my father-in-law just convinced my father-in-law to like start investing and like care about his finances and all those other things um, so man like this is the worst possible time for him to have to got in there because he was so worried he was so worried about uh, about losing money and like we put his money into the stock market like a week ago and then because GameStop is happening like everything else has kind of dropped in price and he's so like oh my gosh I trusted you like you've lost me money and I'm like dude it'll grow back it'll return don't worry about it but he yeah yeah books I am doing a marathon today we're gonna we're just trying to finish it man I'm just trying to finish it my hand paintings even getting a little sloppy if I'm being honest But the, the rule, the rule of a joy of 3D art is to finish the entire thing in one live stream. So we're going to keep going until it's done. And then I'm going to go eat because I haven't eaten yet today. And we've been doing this for four hours now. I mean, okay, so Fable sometimes, I, I mean, I could agree with you, right? Like. The stock market is kind of gambling, right? But over the long term, over the long term, if you're passively investing, not not doing this crazy stuff that you, like, I'm talking like index funds, mutual funds, or whatever, the stock market only goes up. It only goes up. So putting your money in it, even if you have a dip, you're gonna be fine. You get dividends, you get returns, the prices increase. Like, I mean, I know the pandemic happened last year, right? But like I made 10 grand last year from my investments, which was nuts. Um, Cause it was the first year I'd ever actually like done it. Okay, so now I don't want to paint both sides here. So we're going to turn on symmetry across the Y axis. And we're just going to mix in some colors. So we have this very bright base color. So let's bring in some of this kind of a darker color here. And I'm gonna create some wood grain going across. There we go. Get some nice little nice little coloration going on in here. Just there we go. There we go. All right. Now we're gonna we're gonna darken up this section right here, and so we're gonna change the fall off from smooth to sharper. Bring this down. There we go. And then we're gonna take this and just kind of bring this kind of cut inward. Doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just, just like enough to like continue on the, the cut. We'll do the same thing on the other side.
Uh, like Gunger's house will be kind of similar to this, but the, yeah, this is not quite Gunger's house. This will definitely be a house that appears. It'll be um, the house that makes its appearance at the end of the animation when Gunger is returning the weapons from the fallen Minotaur. That'll be, this'll be that house. It'll, he'll like come to this place. There we go. Sign is done. House, the sign. The only thing left is the wall. So, and then these should all be uh, linked duplicates. So, kind of come down here in the environment go to the pieces and actually go over to UV editing because we need to add all of these to there just hide this for a quick second we can just delete that face we don't need it all right Big winter storm's gonna hit the northeast. Yeah, I'm in Minnesota, so we're in the Midwest. We're we're good for like two or three days, and then we are gonna get absolutely wrecked. Minnesota is a big one. Yeah, it's it has it has frequently been colder than Alaska since we've been up here. There we go. All right, what's up with this face? It's fine. I don't know what's going on here. All right, whatever. Huh. I guess for this, we could...
There we go. That's going to be fine. And then I can kind of do that same thing. You're in Delaware? I'm gonna be honest, I've never met anyone from Delaware. All right, here we go. Grab all these and unwrap. And I don't know why this face is just so messed up. What is it attached to? Hold on, no, there's gotta be something here. What is this? Like Narnia? Yeah, I mean, oh come on, Delaware. All right, there we go. We're good. We have the bricks in place. All of those pieces are now ready. So we can save, go to the texture paint, add in a base color node here. There we go, wall base color, perfect. Maybe I should do something to attack on Titany. I don't know. There's an idea. Okay. I'm just gonna paint that. There we go. That's a different color, right? There we go. It's a state, but it's more like the suburbs of Philly. It's the second smallest state. Okay. Yeah, Rhode Island would be the smallest state, right? All right. There we go. We're almost done. Look at that. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Now we need to come over here and add Let's go to texture paint. We're going to paint on some detail. We're gonna lighten this up a little bit. And for 
our purposes, let's go ahead and hide the array modifier just so I can. No, no. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I shouldn't have to. Oh, I bet I know what's going on. Ah, I know exactly what's going on. Face orientation. <sighs> of course. Boom. So now we can just kind of lighten up edges of the stonework here. Well, thankfully, no one's going to see underneath the stone, but... Darkening. I'm gonna add some Hey Bioback, welcome to the stream. How you doing? I've been trying to learn low poly modeling in Blender, and my first episode helped a lot with getting used to the tools. You deserve a lot more subs. Well, thank you, Bioback. I hope you're subbed as well. Um, but you're talking about the first episode of the Joy of 3D Art, right? The double-sided axe. Cool. I'm glad. I'm glad that helped.
as you can see, this is what we're working on today. This is where we're at. undo all of that. I do want to like get some color mix in here, but I don't want it to look weird. Actually, you know what? Why don't I paint onto the other thing? So, we'll undo. Still very new, coming from SketchUp. You learned about loop cuts, proportional editing, a lot of things that weren't available in SketchUp in that episode. That's awesome, man. Or woman, dude. I'm glad you found it helpful. That's why we're doing it. Here every two weeks, just to create something together, help people learn. I know they're on the longer side of things, so I was a bit concerned that people would actually watch them all the way through, but. but I'm glad it helped you out. I think an un unexpected side of, uh, of doing the joy of 3D art was the fact that now that I've like started doing it, um, I've kind of realized that I have, I have some new cool, cool new tutorial ideas that I can put together. Um, so that's been an unexpected thing, some new series and stuff that I'm actually excited about. There we go. All right, now let's grab the Darken. Come in here and just all sorts of damage to the inside of this.
So let's come over here. Take a look at this. Let's add in a light. We want to add in a sun. All right, as far as I think I'm concerned for this video, you guys have seen enough of the hand painting, you guys have seen enough of the, you know, the modeling, all the modeling stuff has been done for a while. So here's what we created. Now, we're gonna save this, but I wanna show you a really, really cool add-on that you can pick up in Blender. You can check out the, uh, or on Blender Market. You can check out the link in the description below um, it won't benefit my channel, it won't benefit me at all, but this is something that's really cool if you ever do like particle systems or environments or anything like that. So let me show you how this works. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna have to, let's kind of change this up a little bit. Switch over to the desktop. Okay, so we have the scene. But there's this really cool add-on called uh, Scatter, and it's Scatter uh, Pro 4.0 or whatever. Um, it's about 45 to 95 dollars on Blender Market. I think it's worth it, especially because I don't want to take the time to bother with um, particle systems and things like that, or create grass or anything. So they actually have this kind of brought into it. Um, all you do, once you add it in, you download it and everything, you just choose a target. So we'll choose this ground object here, and then you can choose kind of a, a clumping. So let's just, for the sake of my GPU and the stream, let's go ahead and uh, choose a grass cluster medium, and then we'll choose a biomes manager. And you can see that we have all these different biomes here by default. So I can literally choose any of them and it will add them in for me. It comes with a bunch of downloaded assets and stuff. Um, but let's go ahead and let's just say, let's say we want this one. So we'll just click the button and it'll give it a moment. And then depending upon your GPU power, uh, it'll work. <laughs> I'll also say that it, there is a, it, it is highly dependent upon the scaling of the object of your target. Uh, so we can see how this is gonna work down here as it adds these things in. We can close out the manager. You can see these particle systems have just gotten added in. Yeah, let's go to the viewport shading. David, how do you remember all the key shortcuts? Welcome to the stream, by the way. Uh, you you kind of just get used to the stream shortcuts or like the, the blender shortcuts. Uh, and all of the tools have a nice little tool tip attached to them. So you kind of memorize them after a while and then you know, it gets a lot faster just to hit a hotkey and move on. Uh, but it does take some time, I'll say that. It takes a couple of, it takes a, a little bit trying to get used to it, uh, but then it's definitely worth it in the long run. Well, you guys can see the particle system uh, being gener generated and everything. So uh, that's probably good. Go to cycles. Right, and then I can just show you, I'll post a render of this afterwards. I think my GPU is crapping out. Um, 
or maybe my CPU is just it's like seriously overworked right now because we're in Cycles Render Engine instead of Eevee's Render Engine. Um, Okay, I get why Streamlabs is being dumb. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yep, okay. I can't I can't do anything. Blender is Blender's crashed. Well it's not crashed, it's just not responding because things. So we'll let it respawn and then I wanted to show you guys this. But it's really cool because you don't have to create any of the grass or anything on your on your own. You can literally just like add in the biome, hit done, and then you know adjust it via the the internal thing to create what you want to create. I think it's amazing, highly recommended. Um, but I don't get anything, so check it out if you want. Otherwise, I'm sure I'll do a small little like let's make grass or whatever, but. Oh no, Blender. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I think my stream is is kind of crapping out on me um, because of this. But <laughs> yeah, that's what I get for trying to trying to show you guys something. I need a more powerful computer. So. <laughs> This thing has served me well for like five years now, and it's time for some upgrades. Just give it a minute. Okay, I am not gonna do anything in Blender. Not touching it. I have an i I have an i7 GPU, but. Like I said, it's five years old, so the technology's come a long way. The speeds are, like, seriously increased. Um, so, but you, but you guys can see right now, you guys can see, look at all that grass and stuff that just came in from that small little thing. And it really, in my opinion, it really makes the, the scene a little bit better. So, uh, while Blender is going to continue to die on me, <laughs> suppose it will, um, let us let me go ahead and just say we're done with the stream overall. We're, we're done. Uh, so, since we're done, 